Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to our, our show today. How is everyone doing? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, guys. We're a bit early today. Yeah, we are earlier than usual today. We normally do this show at 7, but today is 5 o'clock. We came on because uh, I've got a function later on today. How is everyone doing? Can you hear me? Please say hello if you can hear me. Say yes in the comment section if you can hear me. As you are coming in, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Can you hear me? Please confirm in the comment section if you can hear me. Ghana lady, can you hear me? Please confirm if you can hear me. I don't know if people can hear me. Okay, you can hear me. Romari, hey, hello. My in-law, you're welcome. Okay, you can hear me. All right, okay. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much for being here tonight. I appreciate you. I love you guys. Before we start, just a few um, housekeeping. I've got my guest. Her name is Mary. She's come to share her experience of marrying someone uh, and ignoring all these red flags, okay, uh, because he claims to be a pastor. I put it in quotes, all right? Uh, so before we, I introduce my guest, I just want to please remind you to be respectful when she comes on. This is her live experience, please. Our people have, have a way of making other people's experience as if it's all about them. Okay? This is not about you. It's not about your brother. It's not about your sister. This is about Mary and the man that she was with. Please do not make this about yourself. Don't use it as a tool for you to start, you know, blaming anybody or shaming anybody. This is not about shaming anybody. It's not about blaming. It's about a woman who's been through in her experience and having the courage to come and share today. Please don't make this about yourself, okay? As you know, we don't tolerate any abusive comments here. Whether during the live show or thereafter, if you post any negative comment, I will delete and block you and you will not be able to comment on my show again. That is a guarantee, please. I find that whenever we finish this show, a lot of people start trolling writing nonsense and giving advice these people that you are giving advice some of you you're not even old enough they can be your mother they didn't come here to ask for your advice they've come here to share there is no shaming absolutely zero tolerance to shaming on this platform please i'm begging you respect my guests don't come here to say oh blame anybody you, everybody do, do their own mess and we make our own mistakes in private, but our people will have a way of anybody that comes out to share is the person you want to shame. It is not allowed here, okay? If your life is perfect, you've never made any mistake in your life, good for you, okay? Perhaps you don't need to be here. It's only those who this message is for that will take something from it tonight. I feel like I have to say this because I'm having to shut down the comment section and I don't want to do that. Because some people have something valuable they want to say to encourage. If your comment is not edifying, is not encouraging my guests or people that are reading it, don't leave it. Please do not. I don't want anybody to come here and start trolling and throwing shade. It is absolutely not allowed. And of course, before we jump in, don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe if you have not yet done so. Thank you, everyone in the studio. I see you. I'm going to bring my guest in now. But before I do so, I have a young man. I has his first Holy Communion yesterday. And it was so funny because he's a, he's a son to one of our, our sisters in the house. He's AJ's son. And he, we went to be with him yesterday because he was having his first Holy Communion. And I want to say a massive shout out to DK for his first little communion, and this is what we did yesterday. Hey. Guess who's here? Hmm? Why are we yes, gathered here? Hmm? Tell us now why we're gathered here. You are, the, you are the celebrant yeah. now. Tell us. Because today is my Holy Communion. Holy Communion Day. He's having his first Holy Communion. How do yeah. you feel? Excited. You feel excited? Yeah. You're not smiling. If you're excited, you should smile. <laughs> <laughs> you should smile now. And these are all your friends. Everybody say hello. Hi. Subscribe to Everybody TV. TV. Celebrating First Holy Communion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put on your notification bell. 
Yeah. 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 How would I know your name now? You tell them. You should have told them your name. What's your name? Chimadika. Chimadika is celebrating his first holy communion. These are all his lovely friends. Hmm? Yeah. You are the confident one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. I hope you had a good time today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Did you have a good time? Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Some people want to be on it. <laughs> oh, that's the gold is represented. <laughs> <Hey! laughs> All right. All right. This is live and direct from Bass Building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are here to, to celebrate First Holy Communion. Really, really special day. Yeah. All right. I hope you guys have a, had a good time. Hey! Yeah. See you later. Say bye bye. bye, -bye. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. That's Chimadika. Uh, he had his first Holy Communion yesterday and we're together to celebrate. So yeah, let's get on with it now. Congratulations again, Chimadika. May the Lord bless you and uplift you. You will grow to be a prime minister in this country. You will do your parents proud. Your mother will celebrate you. The whole world will celebrate you in Jesus' name. Congratulations, mm. my son. I love you very much. I know you are watching <laughs> because he said to me, Auntie, are you going to put it? Are you going to put it on the show? <laughs> I said, okay, let's put it on the show then. Oh dear. So now I'm introducing my guest. I've got Mary in the building. Hello, Sister Mary. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for having me. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. To wish hello to you in the comment section. They are all saying hello to you. You're welcome. I must mm -hmm. say that uh, I've had series of guests on this show but mary is one woman that is so so eager like she cannot wait to share this story yesterday she sent me a message you're like auntie b do you remember it's tomorrow that is my show i'm like yes i never forget <laughs> i don't forget when we have show planned so mary is here to tell us about marrying this man and one thing i like about mary is that she's she knows the mistake she made she made with this man she said i ignored all the red flags but I chose to jump to, into this marriage because he is a pastor, in quotes. So, Mary, you're welcome once again. Tell Thank us you why much. you are here. Tell us why you want to share this story with us and a little bit about your background and how you got together with this so-called pastor. Um, I started like when a, a woman is growing. I have two kids before anyway. When I'm very young, I had my first child when I was about 17. And the second one about 19. So I actually did bring them up. My mom helped me raise them. So I've been outside the country for like 22 years now, trying to give them a better life. Thank God for that. So I was attending this church. Oh. This man came in. I didn't even notice that somebody is watching me anyway. He came in and approached me and said, uh, what's your name? I just said I just said my name and he told me his name. I would just walk off. But when I got home, I called my friend. I said, Ah, somebody approached me at the door of the church today. I said, Do you re remember? I didn't even no remember the person's name. Even I can't even re remember the person if I see him. So it went like that. And, but he was not attending my church. He was attending another church, but the same church in another town called Bolton. So for me, I live, in, yeah, I, I live in Manchester. So he was okay. attending the branch in Bolton, assi doing assistant pastor in Bolton. Right. So like every Tuesday, he comes to Manchester to worship with us. But we do have this our prayer meeting every Tuesday. So that is how he met me. So um, the following Tuesday, I was inside the bus and somebody just touched me from behind. And when I raised up my head, I didn't know whether it was the guy I met the other day or not. But I just smiled and greeted the person. We both came down the same uh, bus stop. I went into the church. So before the church closed, he came and whispered to me and said, please wait for me. Because I'm an usher. I said, okay. After uh, closing of the church, he came and said, uh, he wants to take me out for lunch. I said, I had lunch. He said, we are going to Mandina. I said, my brother, I don't eat all those Let's just go to Chinese where you will eat and be left. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my god, <laughs> that's funny. He said, I don't eat all those mete mete. You need to uh -huh. be left. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was in front of my friend, so one lady that attended my church. So that one said, I've not been to Chinese before. I'll just use this opportunity. So we both followed him. 
we got the hay, paid for the food, we are there. So when it got to uh, time to collect a uh, child from the school, the other lady left us, so we both sat there. That was when he now expressed himself that uh, he has been watching me and uh, he has been talking to people that ha he sees that I talk to in that church mostly. They told him that I'm a single girl, blah, 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 that he doesn't want relationship like boyfriend and girlfriend, he wants to marry her. Said my brother, don't you see that I'm, I'm overripe? I'm overripe already. You so said that. Not, yeah, that was what I told him. But you told him when you're he overripe said, and ready. Uh -huh. hmm. okay. At this age, when somebody was coming to say, ah, I want to marry you, I said, okay. Oh. Then we exchanged our number. He now asked me, Do you have children? I said, Yes, I have two children. I said, I just need a father figure for them. It's not like I need somebody to babysit them because they are no longer babies anymore. I said, I just need, at least, if I'm giving them advice or telling them something, I should be talking from experience that I have to, to talk to them. I said, that is not the problem. I said, do you still want to have a child? I said, yes, so because these children, I didn't bring them up myself. My mom looked after them for me. So I want the one that I will conceive myself, bring that child up so I will know when they creep, when they start talking and everything. He said, okay. So yes, I'm going to go see there, Mary. Hmm. There's something you said there during your first meeting. This man is already hmm. talking about marriage. Guys, hmm. this we have identified this as one of the most common red flags with narcissist people. Okay? When a man comes to you and says, I don't want to friend you, I don't want to be in a relationship, I want to marry. Please, don't take it as a compliment. Okay? You might be flattered that, oh, he's, he's serious because women want men that are serious, but it's actually a red flag. If you didn't know that, please, it's a red flag. You need to have a relationship. You need to get to know one another before the talk of marriage can even come up, okay? Another red flag there is the fact that Mary said, I am overripe, I'm overripe like plantain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overripe like plantain. In the comment section, people are laughing that are you be plantain. That is another red flag. Please, it's an indication of desperation. Don't do that. Okay. We had last my last show. We had we talked about this extensively. There's no overripe or underripe or riping. Okay. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Mm. All right. There's no set time. So don't tell a man I'm overripe. I'm ready. Just because, first, first date, he's proposing you're accepting. Red flag. No, no. Okay. Point made. Let's get on my sister. So we exchanged number. Uh, that evening, we, he called me. We talked to you six o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So this, after six o'clock, I slept for about another two hours. He called me again. We were on the phone throughout. Then he now said, uh, go and tell your pastor that you've seen somebody. I said, okay. I said, give me your full name so that if I'm talking to my pastor, he should know the person I'm talking to. He should know the person that I'm uh, talking to anyway. He now gave me his full name. I went to my pastor and told my pastor. My pastor didn't even say anything. Not knowing that he has had a relationship with a lady inside that same, my own church. Hmm. That didn't work out well. It was the pastor that connected the lady for for him. Mm -hmm. So that one didn't work out. So it was they now told the pastor that he wants to go elsewhere and look for that pastor now said, ah, put your eye on ground. You will get another one here. There are uh, young women here that need to be married. So instead of you going to another church to marry, you should marry from your people you know here. So I want mm -hmm. to give pastor the name of pastor said, okay, uh, we should not sleep with each other, that he will call him, he knows him, he will call him and talk to him, we should be knowing each other and trying to know each other well. We said, okay. Then we started knowing each other. A week later, I invited him to my house. He came to my place, I gave him food. After I finished it, he said, so if I marry you now, is this what I'll be eating? I mm. said, yes. Mm. Mm -mm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mary, please, sorry. I think I missed a point there. You said after a week of meeting him, and I haven't told the pastor. I have a problem with what the pastor did there, but I'm just going to ignore it because if he was already with somebody in the church and it didn't work out, 
Did the pastor know why that relationship failed? Did he tell you what was happening in, and why it didn't work out with that person? Or you just kept quiet and saying... My pastor didn't tell me anything. He up to now. It was he didn't him. tell you. He just no. told you that, uh, okay, you push shouldn't sleep together, but there are yeah. plenty women in the church that he can date. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You said he came to your house after one week and you made a meal for him and he said what? After I finished eating, he said, yeah, if I marry you, is this the kind of food I will be eating? I said, yes. What kind of food was it? Did you not like it? It was a uh, pandesium and a forero. Okay. Well, did he say it as a compliment or did he not like it? I don't understand. No, he liked it. Oh, okay. It so when he, was about, uh, when he was about to leave, he now said, uh, if there is a... Uh, more soup I should give him but I really like the soup so I give, I took a plastic and gave it it, it, took, take, it took take away <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. I'm so sorry I'm laughing it's just funny one so, week later he came to your house to eat and he, he uh, took take away okay uh -huh. all right so um, we started talking to each other and seeing each other every Tuesday in church normally because we do come to my own church on Tuesday like that, so for about three months, I didn't hear anything from Pastor. So, me, I didn't even know where I was coming from because he was not living in Manchester. He was living outside Manchester. Yeah. So, exactly. when, when, when I now told my friends, I said, look, oh, I think uh, I found somebody, oh, blah, blah, blah. They said, you know where it's coming from? I said, no. The other one said, it might be coming from the grave to church. You don't even know. You don't even know where this man is coming from. And you are asking him to come to your house and you are saying you see him in church every Tuesday. Yeah. Tell him you want to come and see him. If even if he, even if he have a wife at home, you don't know. You yeah. should know where he's coming from. So is that I now ask him. Told you that? Yeah. Okay. So that is a very very good friend. And also, before you carry on, Mary, I'm so sorry, but we have to just take it one step at a time to bring out okay. the lessons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a red flag. There, you don't meet a man one week later. You bring him to your house, especially if you are a single parent and you've got mm -hmm. kids. Before you introduce a man to your children, make sure you've dated him for a minimum, a minimum of about, about two or three months, and you know that this is solid, preferably six months even. Don't bring a man into your children's life, except the relationship has been going on for a while. You know a lot about him, and you are sure that there's a future, okay? So that your friend actually gave you advice about knowing him. Because he, brother has come to the house and eaten and even don't take away. Okay, which is, I mean, okay, we just let that go. Carry on, my okay. sister. Uh, my kids are not here anyway. They are still with my mom. They, oh, they just in they just told me as their mom. Uh, but we don't okay. have that mom and children relationship. It's my mom. They know as their mom anyway. Oh, they don't live with you? No, they are, they are in Nigeria. Oh, I see. So you live alone. Yeah. So okay. I now told him, I said, I want to know where you're coming from. You might be actually coming from the cemetery. I don't know. So he laughed and gave me his uh, address. But he gave me a particular time to come. Say, make sure you are there at so-so-so time. I said, okay. So I went on that time he gave me. I got to the house. It was like a shared house. You know, if you are on asylum, these houses that government gives to people. Yeah. A shared house. So I went there. He was every minute he will bring his head out of the window. I said, ah, Are you expecting somebody? He said, No. Uh, later, I now said, uh, Before six o'clock, I want you to leave. I said, Why? Is, are you expecting somebody? He said, no. I said, But you've been so restless since. And he said, I will tell you later. I said, You will tell me later. So immediately, you know, we women, I started thinking maybe another woman is coming or I have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I said, No, no, I will tell you later. Uh, but I wanted to go before six o'clock. So I left. I got home. My mic was dangling up and down. I called him on the phone. He said, I will see you tomorrow. So actually, he came and see me the next day. He told me uh, he didn't know how to say it. He, his asylum has already failed. They've asked him to leave the house because he doesn't have anywhere to go. That is why he, he just hung around. Normally, it does stay there during the daytime. It's well, because I said I was coming. He goes there to stay and wait for me. He will leave as early as six o'clock. Be roaming all the stores and places in Manchester or and, uh, nearby. Then at night, he will sneak into the house and go and sleep. 
Right. So you also had the vibration issue. Yeah. I said, so how long have you been dealing on this one? He said over three months. I said, so why did you speak to your pastor that you assist, uh, assist as the assistant pastor? Mm -hmm. He said, I uh, spoke to him, they, they said he should wait a while so the church can raise money for him to get a place and blah, blah. So I said, okay, what are we going to do now? He said, we should move in together. I said, it's also no. It's so soon for us to move in together. I said, oh, the loneliness in this country, if we move in together now, and eh, you will know that I'm secured with this one. A hey, pastor just... wants, you to, wants to move in with you oh. when you are not married. Another red flag. If he's a real pastor, he will not be suggesting moving in together. And the thing I like about Mary is that Mary acknowledges that she saw the red flags. Okay? She said it. Say, I saw it, but I ignored it. If you guys saw the title and yeah. the poster, you will know. She knows. This is another red flag saying, let's move in together. Because now we've established that this brother has no job. I don't know if they were paying him. Was they, were they paying him for being an assistant pastor? He said they, they were not paying him. Uh -huh. So he had no job, no income. He has no paper. And, you know, looking for food. So exactly what is he bringing to this relationship? He's got zero to bring into this relationship, right? So if you want to ask me, I would say that he targeted you in the church. Because he saw that you were living alone. You are of a ripe age, the way you put it. Let me use your language. And he could enter you. So these are all the red flags. All right. So he said you should move in together. What happened then? He said we should move in together. I said that it's too early. But at the same time, I was having a second thought to say, ah, if immigration bundled him, now, blah, blah, blah. So then I now want to meet my pastor. I said, how far about the prayer? Pastor said that God has not shown him anything. Ah. He said, Mr. Mary, have you, are you praying? Are you praying about this thing? Too? I said, Pastor, I prayed. I didn't pray. The truth was that I didn't pray. <laughs> Mary, I didn't pray. I just love you. You said I didn't pray. Pastor said, are you praying? Mary said, he told Pastor you are praying, but you didn't pray because you just want to marry this guy. Was because he handsome? What was joining you to him like that? Not, you see his picture now. I'll send you his picture in your WhatsApp. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I want you to talk about from, it. Apart from, apart from his answer, I was saying this is the only way I can actually grow in Christ because uh, I want to grow in Christ. This is, a, is the right person for to teach me, to put me in the right track and everything. I've already made up my mind. So yeah. Pastor Nelson said, if you have any other person that you know, bring their names. I, I brought other three names. Pastor Nelson brought one name out of the three names and said, uh, I've prayed, this one is the person that I got to. And I said, ah, America, no, no, I'm not going. And moreover, that person doesn't even believe. He believes in uh, evolution and then blah, blah, blah. I said, no, I said, this one that I've seen, tell God to revise it. This one that I've seen is what I want. He now said, if that is the case, he now called it there. Have you prayed over it? I want to say, ah, I've prayed over it. Uh, it's everything. Even before I pray over it, it's the kind of woman I want, blah, blah. Pastor now said, okay, if that is the case that you guys are satisfied with each other, I want your parents to be involved. I don't want to marry, I don't want uh, UK marriage. I want the parents to be involved. So if you go and pay a bright price, you think everything is okay with you, you push a semi video and uh, picture, then I will bless you and ask you to go ahead. So we left our we left church all day. We started doing our own program at home. Then somebody now called me in the church, one lady. He now said, hey, Sister Mary, you know this guy's condition. Or you need to assist him with some money. Whether you went to speak to that woman to speak to me, I don't know. Because is this is this is the person that we don't even have rapport in the church. It's just ah good 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 morning, man. Good afternoon, man. That is all we have. He said, and you should assist him with little money. You know, he doesn't have money. I said, okay. I said, that is not a problem. So I now ask him, I said, what's your plan at home? He said, the, the brother estimated the 250000 I said, it's not like I have the money, but I will ask my junior sister to borrow me that money. What did he need so the like, money for? Uh, for arrangement at home to go and see my parents and stuff. So, okay, what about, what happened to the moving in? Did he move in with you? No, he hasn't moved in yet. Okay, all right. So, 
Well, I don't ask my the brother to send me the account. I gave my sister the account. I asked my sister to pay money. He said I should not give his brother the two hundred fifty thousand that they asked. I should give him one uh, one thousand five. I asked my sister to pay uh, thousand five into his account. I didn't hear anything. Ah, my mom said they've already called and said they are coming, but they didn't show up on that on that his day. His family. His family. Yeah. So okay, my mom so now called him and said, "What is happening?" He now said he didn't know that he would call the brother. After I called the brother, I saw that he was very depressed. He was not happy. What happened? He said, that, you know that my brother spent that money for another thing. Okay. I said, okay, where are we going to get money now? Because this one that I borrowed from my sister now, he's not even start paying. And he said that he will tell your sister, uh, give me your sister's number. I will tell her to go and look for, for me. Then later I will pay. I gave him my sister's number. He called and asked by himself. My sister said, okay. My sister paid another money to his brother's account. They finally went to Benin and do the normal traditional life. So they sent the picture and everything. We gave it to Pastor here. Okay. Then along the line, another thing I saw that I ignore. I asked, because it's not like I was Momo, I asked. But he has answers to give me. And I would just say, okay, I would, with the kind of person, I would just overlook it. There is this particular woman he was speaking with. The woman is from Zimbabwe. One day the woman was crying on the phone. He was begging the woman very seriously. And I said, who is this person that you're always talking to? He said uh, he knew the woman through her daughter. And the woman wanted them to be friends. But because uh, the woman was not actually uh, divorced from her husband, they just separated. So he couldn't have anything to do with the woman. So because he has refused the woman not having anything to do with the woman, the woman I went to see another guy, and uh, so, after so after let one, me get this straight, Mary. Mm -hmm. So you had to borrow him money to give his family to come and see your family. By the way, this mm -hmm. is a Yoruba person. The pastor is a Yoruba mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And okay, somebody is distracting me in the comment section, and I can't take it anymore. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah. Okay, see Nelson. You think you know it all. You are Mr. Perfect. You've never made any mistake before in your life. You are a distraction. You hear me? You are a distraction. I don't want to see you on this platform. Just go away. I don't need you to come here and judge anybody. We have to be objective. We have to. You always leave all these comments as if you're all shit. You have all your life together. Who the hell are you to come and judge anybody here? There's a reason why we don't judge people here. If we start judging, nobody's going to come, come forward. People are trying to share their story and you want to silence them. Because you are trying to be objective. I'm warning you for the last time. Leave this place now. I don't need people like you here. All right. Sorry, Mary. I'm just no being distracted by, by some rubbish human being there. So you say you bought, you had to get money from your sister to, to so give his family to come and visit yeah. your family in Benin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And That's he was also be. talking. He was talking to he was talking to another yeah. woman, you said. Maybe, yeah. So okay, yeah, he now okay. told me that, yeah, he now told me that uh, uh, because uh, the woman has not uh, divorced his husband, he couldn't have any relationship with the woman. But the woman went to meet another guy through Facebook. Now the woman is pregnant for the boy. But uh, the lady didn't tell the boy that he's pregnant for because the woman has HIV and he slept with the boy without using anything. The woman is pregnant for somebody who has HIV. No, the woman herself had HIV, and so he met a guy on the um, on Facebook. So he went to sleep with that person. She now got pregnant. Okay, so what's his role in all this? Is he counseling them, or what? What was he doing? Yeah, he said he was counseling the woman because the woman said he was going to have an abortion. Oh, he was not telling the woman that the woman should keep the child that he will put his name on that child. <clears throat> right. Okay. Carry on. So, another time, why will you put your name on that child? Is that the, the, this woman actually know who permitted her. Let her go and tell the person. So, all that one went back and forth, back and forth. The woman actually went to see terminate the pregnancy. The day the woman told told him, it was like a, a plantain that they soak in the oil. It didn't eat. It didn't do anything. I said, ah, are you sure you are not the owner of this Father. pregnancy? He said, no. <laughs> and that, these are, these are, he called them my, my, then they said, God gave me all these people to cancel. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I said, once the woman has gone to terminate the pregnancy, what are you going to do? 
Me that you are, you said you want to marry, you've not even focused, we've not even discussed of how to have a child or anything. You are crying for another man's child. Then, Auntie, I asked him to move in so that I can be seeing him properly. In our movie, <laughs> oh baby, he says so that I can be seeing him properly. You want him to, you want to supervise him, so uh -huh. you think if he moves into your house that you will know everything he's doing. I will know everything. In your mind, you are thinking you can fix him if he comes in. Uh -huh. Then everything that is wrong, you can you can sort him out, right? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so in our movie, so one day the third person or uh, our person asked us because that people are seeing us together awful. Are we move, living together now? We said yes. He said, ah, uh, Pastor Langbaja, I hope you've not slept with her. He said, no. I said, Pastor, is a lie. We've done it twice, but he has warned me that if we if I allow him to do it again, he will not marry me, so we've stopped. So, so let Pastor, me ask you briefly, because of the issue of that woman that you introduced, I'm a bit concerned now. Because you said that the way he was showing concern for that woman, it didn't seem like he was just counseling them. It seemed like he may have had something to do with that other woman. Yes. Did he, Did you at that point, did you think about doing maybe like a test to do HIV or all this food, uh, full uh, test to see that uh, he's clean before moving he, in and, and having sexual he, relations with him? I asked him to go and do tests. He swear with the Bible, swear with the father's grave and everything that he, he has nothing to do with that woman physically. That mm -hmm. he cross each other. So if he if he knows he has nothing, there was the point of saying no to test. So he didn't do the test. You guys didn't do the test. test. No. So you don't know whether he's, he's, he's clean or not, even. No. So we moved in to okay. So Pastor okay. now said uh, since the results of Nigeria have come, the picture and the video that they used in going to see my parents, we should fix it then so that we can have the liberty to do whatever we want to do. So we now fix the date for the wedding. Two days to that wedding, this voice was so loud that you know when somebody is pushing you to do, go and do something, if you don't do that thing, you won't have peace. The voice yeah. was just you are making a mistake. You are making the biggest mistake of your life. I was lying on the bed. The voice was so loud that I just had to jump up from the bed. I went to the city room and say, look, this wedding is not holding anymore. Yeah. This voice that has been on my head since yesterday said I'm making the biggest mistake. He jumped on his knee. He yeah. said, please, if I have offended you, if I have done something wrong, if I have done something that you don't understand, ask me so that we explain. Please, please. He was really begging. He didn't sleep that night. He begged the daybreak. <laughs> yeah, I was confused. That you should go yeah. ahead with it. Is the marriage in Nigeria or here? Yeah. The family went to do the one in Nigeria. So we did so our you basically own. Basically, you paid your own bride price because you borrowed him money to pay the bride price. Uh, uh, it was later I knew that I paid my own bride price. Yes, because you borrowed his family money. We, women, yeah. women, ladies, I don't care how desperate you are, never. And I, whether we don't want to go into the issue of bride price, is our culture, whether you will like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, this is what we have as a culture. Okay? Never, and I repeat, never borrow money or give money to a man who cannot at least afford to pay your bride price. Okay? It's, no, no, no. There is no understanding it. Pay, okay, maybe you will pay me back. Maybe when he starts working, maybe because he doesn't have paper, maybe because he's homeless. Mm -mm. Don't justify it. Do not pay your own bride price, ladies. There's no amount of desperation that is higher than that. Okay? The man will not even respect you at the end of the day. He and curse you later. He goes, I abuse yes. you. He goes, I, I pity you. Now I make I marry you. Not be uh -huh. you borrow me money. Not be you pay your own bride price. It's happened before. And another thing I want to take away from that is that before you move a man into your house or you want move into a man's house, please go and do your blood works. Do all the tests. Chlamydia, HIV, Hep B, Hep C, all of them. Do it. If you live in the UK here, yeah, it's free of charge to do those tests. Just go to your GP. Book an appointment. They don't charge. Just tell your doctor, I want to do tests. Okay? Say, I want to do all the blood tests. I want to check. And make sure that person that you are moving in with has done their own test. And you see the results. Don't expose yourself to, you know, diseases. There are too many diseases out there. Oh. Okay? Do not expose yourself to that. All right. That's another lesson I want to bring out here. Because Mary said she wants to share this story so that people can learn. And these are the learning we are getting from it. 
and she acknowledges where she has done the mistakes, right? So he was begging. He was swearing that he's clean and yeah. he was in marriage. Okay. So he begged me and begged me. So the, the Saturday of it, we went ahead and do the marriage. So after the, we signed the marriage certificate and everything, they gave it to me. When we got home, I put it in my wardrobe. I said, tomorrow I'll just put it in my file where I keep my documents. My so-called husband went to the sitting room and lie down. Me, I went to my bed and sleep. In the morning, I said, ah, you slept in the sitting room. He said, I'm very tired. I said, ah, me too. Hoping that, okay, because we've not been doing this, uh, Mathematics yeah, on this time. Yeah. I took off from work to have a good time so that we can do it and be satisfied. So that whether I can even be pregnant after that time, so I didn't even mind. You were already but, you even want to be pregnant. Very, uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, very mm. eh? Chai. Okay. Go on. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was Joko. One week this man slept in the city room. After wedding. After wedding. Uh, if I go and call him in the evening, I said I'm going to be able to join you now. If I wake up in the morning, he slept in the city room from Saturday to Saturday. I said, ah, You said I should hold on when you've not married me. Now you've married me. Should I still hold on? Ah, he said, My dear, he said that you don't know what people will be thinking. Everybody in that wedding now will just say, Ah, these two people are sleeping with each other seriously. I said that. The Bible says, if you don't want to go and fornicate, you marry. So anybody that is thinking of what me I'm doing inside my room right now, that person has nothing to think. But you didn't have a problem doing it before you got married. Now that you are married, that is, is allowed, I mean... Now you want to think of what people are thinking people in their house. After marriage, and this is a Christian that did it before marriage, but after marriage, pastor, no one do it again. Okay. See, that is where my nightmare starts from. Okay. So I said I was going to report to my pastor, a manage. He said I should not talk to anybody. Anyway, that one went off. A week later, after the marriage, he called me. He said uh, somebody told him that if I bring my papers and his uh, a duro paper, that we can open joint account together. I said, You are not working, you want to open joint account. <laughs> so what are you saying? He said, uh, he said he said, because you don't know how to spend money. He said, you just spend money anyhow. He said, so I need to monitor your money. Ah, that is, sounds very heavy in my ear. I said, okay. There is this lady I call, I confined in church like a big sister. I went to meet her. I said, auntie, look at what this man told me. He said, never in your life have a joint account with any man. So if you want to send money to your mother and your children, now you will be uh, giving excuses or telling him what you are doing. No. If he's working and he's, let him have his own account, you have your own account. So I came back home. I was very bored. I told him, I said, no, I don't want to open this account. Wait until your paper come. You will open your own. <laughs> In that number one. Oh, those are the, when the things start coming on. Then if you sleep and wake up, anybody that I'm so close with, he will say, I dreamt that that, that bad that person is a witch. He now cut me off from everybody. Hmm. Class book, textbook, narcissist behavior, isolation. Yeah. We isolate you from everybody because the people that will advise you, for instance, this is the one, one thing that you've done since the beginning of you, of you meeting this man that I can say that, okay, thank God again for that sister that advised you in church. Because somebody that is not working wants a bank, a, a joint bank account. What is he going to put inside a joint, joint bank account? Eh, Abi, what time? Yeah. Now, eh, yeah. he put inside. He won't put prayer yeah. inside, Abi. You are the only one working and you want joint accounts so that you put prayer. Your own, your own contribution to the account will be prayer. So you did the first smart and wise thing. Thank God for that sister that advised you. That's why sometimes it's good for you not to just try and manage things. It's good for you to say cancel. When you say cancel, you know, then you are sure to get the right thing. So you refuse bank accounts. Then it started to manipulate and, you know, separate and divide. Separate me from everybody. Dreaming and seeing everybody around you as witches and wizards. Yeah, and wizards. So people start surprising that if uh, I might talk to you yesterday, once he dreams about you, I won't want to. If you say hello, Mary, I, I can't answer you when it's there. Mm -hmm. Also, my auntie, my auntie, my auntie came to church and kneeled down for me and said, if I have offended you, I've checked my book, I've checked everything. I know I've not offended you, but you suddenly just cut off from me. 
What have I done? I couldn't open my mouth to say, it's my husband, I saw you that you are a witch. I, I, I was just saying, I was just giving my auntie excuses anyway. You know, finally, uh, cut me off from everybody. It was just me and him. Then, you now start from my children. You are spoiling these children. You send them money too much. Let them grow on their own. I say, ah, children that I have not seen for more than how many years. In fact, it's because of them I came to this country. So I will give them better life. You can't, I can't abandon my children. They know they are old enough to look after themselves. <sighs> that one did not work. My daughter called him daddy. The boy doesn't even like him from day one. Your, da your daughter in Nigeria is calling him daddy. Yeah, yeah. How, if they how want old, to. How old was she when she started calling yeah. him daddy? What, that time? She was on uh, top of the devil. She was the one that just called me. Like, oh. What the fuck? Sorry. How, how old was your daughter when you got married that she started calling him daddy? Uh, so that was on, uh, on an early 20s. So you, you got your, your 20 year old daughter to be calling a man that you just met daddy. As soon, and, no, and as, soon as we got as soon as we got married. So they just assume it's, it's this is their stepfather. It's it's only someone that was calling him daddy if he wants to speak to her. But I just saw it as a sign of respect. But my boy never liked him from day one. The that's only the time I between, that's different between Nigerian children and Obodo Ibo children. You cannot get Obodo Ibo children. 20 year old to come and to call your new husband or wife, daddy or mommy. They won't do it. They will say, no, it's not my dad. They won't. I like mm -hmm. Obodo children because they will tell you their mind. They don't hide it. Whether you like it or not, they will set you. Obodo Ibo children, they know they play. Okay. So, yeah. Come so, my sister. It now comes from my children now. Uh, when that one didn't work to my mom. He said, uh, don't you see that you are not, you are not even getting pregnant? And uh, things are not going too well again. It is your mom that is causing it. Uh, stop telling your mom whatever you are doing. I say, ah, Jesus. why should I stop talking to my mother? Before I met you, my mom is my father, is my mother, is my senior sister, is everybody. So why should I just stop? If she wants to kill me, she will kill me before this time. My God. I, I won't stop. Said because uh, me, I've told my parents not to call me. That now that I'm married, it's just between me and my wife. Me, I should let it be the same way like that. Then I now replied to him, I said, if you have told me that if I marry you, I'm going to cut off my family, I would have think properly before I say, okay. But all this why we are good to you. Now that we are actually we tied the knots now, you are not saying that they are all the people that is disturbing my life. I said, okay, what about you? Why didn't you ask your mom? Where I made a mistake too. He told me that he doesn't have children in Nigeria. This man has three children. Hmm. And you didn't even bother to say that your family should go and check. Because it's possible to check, you know, in case you guys didn't know. I know it's possible to check, but I yeah. didn't check. Yeah, I know. That's one it's thing we have to learn. We, are, we can take that learning away from, from, from here, Mary. Guys, please, if you meet somebody in the diaspora, it's possible to do checks back home. It's possible. Find a way to make sure that you check about him. Because if a basic checks could have been done, Nigeria is small. When it comes to finding people to do checks, just to know the, his hometown, where he comes from. Send somebody to that place. Let them call a, a, a neighbor, a villager. Give them small money. They will tell you all the family history. You would have been able to find out that this man has children. He's has lying. Children. He's lying. He's, he's trying to isolate you from everybody. Even your own children. He's telling you that you are spoiling them. But you can mm. borrow him money. Mm. And he had children. He hid it from you. Okay. Mm. All right, carry on, my sister. So, I now said, you, why not, why did you not ask your mother? You said you are the last one of the house. As old as you are, they're almost 50. You don't have a child. Why didn't you ask your mother what is the cause of your... He said, no, it's because I'm keeping myself, uh, because I want to marry at the right time. I want to have everything before I marry. But you don't have anything, and you've already married. So, that one left. We kept that one aside. It couldn't break... It couldn't bend me down to stop talking to my mom. But sometimes if they are calling me when I'm sitting with, with, with him, I just ignore the, the call. Later, I'm going to call them back. Because actually, he will not call his parents or any of his relatives in my front. When I'm at work, he will call them. But when I'm at home, he won't call them. Making me believe that it's uh, me with you. It's the marriage itself between me and you, not that person. Yeah, that's one of the tactics. 
Victory in Ireland told us that story about how, how, we, how the man would say, it's me and you together. Me and you are together. It's, it's us against the world. Me and you against the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a narcissist, my dear. Mm. So it continues like that, though. Then after some time, it starts starving me with sex. He won't mm. touch me. You see that picture that I sent you that I scraped my hair? Mm. That was the first three months, the first three long months that he didn't touch me. We sleep in the same bed. We eat in the same place. Was, he, was, him, was he not bringing an income in, in in those three months that you married? You are the one working. Are, you, are, you, are, are, you are providing, you are paying the bills, you are feeding him, you are doing everything. Did he all make he any does is go, All he does is go to church. Me, I will be working my house out. So I now asked him, I said, when we didn't get married, you said I should wait. That that is the reason why you were not touching me. And if you see any pregnant woman on the way, you will turn your head and turn your head and hit your head on the pillar. I say, I wish that one was you now. So how do you want me to get pregnant? Is it through my mouth or I just wake up like uh, only Mary in the Bible and I get pregnant? Hmm. All these people that you are seeing that is pregnant, they slept with somebody. They didn't wake up one day and get pregnant. Hmm. Then he now said, uh, you still wear with home. You still put lipstick in your mouth. Anytime I sleep with you, there is one man that comes to beat me because of all these things that you are wearing. Uh, I don't want them. I just woke up that morning. I scraped my hair. Piam, everything. I, all the women I have in the house, I want to put it in the bed. My makeup, everything. I want to dump it in the bed. Oh, my God. Because I was I become, wondering why you... I was wondering why you shaved your hair. When I saw the picture... Guys, she sent me this bunch of pictures how she was before she met this man, during this man. This is a beautiful, gorgeous woman, hardworking woman. When I saw that picture where you shaved your hair, Mary, I was concerned. I was like, did you have a mental breakdown or was it special prayer? What happened? Why did you shave your hair? Bald, completely bald. So you actually went to shave your head because it yeah, wasn't I, sleeping I, with you. I, I, I took everything in. I said, if that one would be the barrier. Let it go because Bible says if anything is going to cost you not to just let that thing go. I scraped my hair, but there was no single hair on my hair. Try. I started tying my hair. The day my senior my senior brother lives in Manchester, the day my senior brother saw me, couldn't recognize me, was here. Yeah. In my language, let me say what my brother said. Mary Ariu was it. Ariu was it. Then I now told my brother, I said, It's because I'm married to a pastor. It's what he want it's what he wants. He said, okay, oh, he walked past me. Hey, I knew my brother was not feeling good that day. That one passed, I was inside. Because actually, I married late, and I just said, I don't know how, my, I've never been married before. So sometimes I just call married people and say, how do you cope? They will say, ah, it's a dear answer. It's not everything that you see, you still, it's not, you have to be patient. So I tried to have patience and see if it would work. That was all the foolishness I was playing. It's not like I was not seeing things. Mm. So, so that one carrier, even scraping my hair and everything does not change. The thing was just getting worse. So after let about me ask you, let me ask you, because this this shaving hair of your hair is very significant to your story, right? Because this is this is serious abuse. It's psychological and emotional abuse, and I know you didn't recognize it at the time. And it's also manipulating you. I, I thank God for that's why I don't like people distracting in the comment section. I just prefer to block them. But because a lot of people in the comment section, they are so in tune and they see from afar. And the comment later, when you're watching this thing again, Mary, I want you to read the comment section. I'm, I'm Especially the, the, comment live, the live comments. This is mm, I'm it, yeah. manipulation. Mm. You tell a woman that you couldn't wait to marry, that you were begging to marry you because you are jobless, you are no immigration paper, you have nothing. You you basically you 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 pressured her, bullied her into marrying you, and then because she's gullible, she agreed, even though she saw all the red flags. And now that you are married, you wouldn't touch her. Do you? What do you? What do you think was responsible for why this man was not touching you after you got married, Mary? Do you ever find out? I, I couldn't figure it out. But the only thing I knew that there was no love in that marriage. It was just after the paper. He didn't love you. Mm. Mm. Okay. 
So you shaved your hair still? I shaved my problem. hair. It didn't, it didn't show anything. Did not change. Still the same thing. Even if it was getting worse and worse, I will come. I, 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 I've been doing night since I've been working in this country. I will come back from night six. He will drag me to church. He will make sure I followed him. Even if you want to go and poop, he will make sure I followed him. So one day somebody now called him in church and said, eh, Pastor, so, so, so. look your wife, she's very tired. He's written all over her that she's tired. When she comes back from work like this, allow her to sleep at home so that you will come to church. You are the head of the house. You will pray over her everything. Yeah. So I wasn't there whether I might talk to him or when he got into the car, he started, eh, look at the way I'm presenting myself to church. I said, do you think these people are blind? Do you think I'm blind? They are blind. Even if you are not seeing it that I'm tired. Do you think they are blind? I just follow you so that I won't miss the day God AJ will bring my child to church. Hmm. So it carries on and on and on like that, my sister. One night, he woke me up. No, this was towards the end anyway. Towards the end. He carried on like that. He knows how to paint. He knows how to do this mini uh, job. He's very good in handwork. They will, people will call him and give him contract. He will charge them in my presence. Too. Two days for the work to finish. He will call me and say, ah, eh, my dear, I won't, if I just tell you what happened, you won't believe. Eh, eh, getting to this day that I want to finish this contract, the only spirit just speaks to me that I should leave the money for this people. I should collect money. I say, ah. After doing this, work in this UK, the Holy Spirit uh, say, one, don't collect leave payments. Money for them. Mm -hmm. I said, this is the Holy Spirit. I said, it's because you know that you are sleeping in a good place. Because in my place, they say the people that sleep in the bed, they are the people that are dreaming. The ones that sleep under the bridge, they don't dream. Mm. I said, what about if we have a child? This is how you go to work and say, Holy Spirit said I should leave the money for them. Mm -hmm. You know what? I won't be allowing to go and do any work. No matter that you will collect the money. You collect the you money. You just send it mm -hmm. to Nigeria. Still lying against the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will punish some people. Sha. Holy Spirit has a special place in hell reserved for people who use the title pastor and Holy Spirit to lie. So how long were you in this marriage altogether, Mary? Seven years. You endured this for seven whole years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us what happened towards the end and how you finally took the bold step to dump yes. this. Later, this if, I, if I eat if I want to eat, I will make sure maybe it's in the bathroom or in the toilet if I can eat in my own house with the food I bought with my money. He will say, if you get fat more than the way you are, I will just go and will come back. I can't play with me. Like, we are watching television. I control what I watch in the television. He holds the remote 24 to 4. The TV that you bought with your money. Yeah, he controls what I watch. But he will put his laptop on, on his knee uh, watching a uh, Yoruba movie. They won't allow me to watch it. He will put preaching. And he selects pastors that I can preach, that, that he likes. Anyone he does not like, I can't even watch his preaching. Hmm. My God. So he started with emotional abuse. He will fire me with his mouth. How my leg is K. How uh, I will be praising God every time I look at the mirror that he married me. How, if I wear any dress, he won't comment on it. That even if I ask him, he won't, he won't say anything. But if another person has make a comment and say, ah, you look good on this dress, he won't speak to me for three days. Did you tell your pastor at any point about this financial and psychological abuse you were going through? And see, I couldn't tell anybody. I was thinking if I get pregnant, everything will change. Oh. That if you see me pregnant. So you were but just trying to be pregnant? You think uh, that uh, trying to get pregnant because all the time he will say, uh, except if, uh, before I, I will show you real love, is when you will have, give me a child. I need a child. I need a child. I need a child. You don't do what the child will come from. Will it come from my mouth? Or if somebody saw that by that can the person get pregnant? You don't sleep with me. That was the most punishment this man punished me for that seven years. I can count how many times that we slept as husband and wife. And that's Several, that times I will count. If you sleep with me, you think cough is jacking somebody. What do you mean? No, no play, nothing. It's booking back, booking back, booking back. It will come down. <laughs> I will be at. I will say, God, I don't know if this one, the pregnancy will come from. Me. Sometimes uh... if you finish, I can't turn. I can't turn. Mm -mm. So there if was I no. Want... He was like doing it as a as a favor. 
once in a while to keep you in line to make sure that maybe, you still stay. If you if you say favor, if you say favor, maybe somebody will do it and say, I'll say, ah, thank God today. This one is like marathon with all the force that he has in his body. Mm -mm. I would say, I don't know. I don't know. Mary I don't says, know Bokoba, it will come down. Uh, oh, Jesus, Mary. Uh, mm. it's, it's terrible, it's terrible. Belle, Belle. Oh, oh Belle. I don't know. If I don't know. Woman, no. Can you believe? Well, mm -hmm. I always believe that I know women are tough. Now, I know women are in the render. Now, this man bring to her, to her knees. So, because of marriage and all this, you know, <laughs> what they've told us and how they psyched us. He said, nah, Boko, people are laughing at the Bokoba, Bokoba. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> oh, oh, my darling, Belle, so, Belle. I, mm -hmm. After much suffering, I didn't know what to say. They are called one of our close family friends. That is the only person you are allowed to enter our house. So any other person don't come to my house. It's not our house. It's your house. Uh -huh. So it's then, not our house. He didn't contribute a dime. He wasn't paying bills. This is your house, Mary, that you shared yeah. with him. Because no. you loved him and you wanted to marry. He never wanted you. I don't think he uh -huh. ever did. Yeah. So I, I, told this guy, I, said, mm. I said, if I tell you what I'm encountering inside this house, you won't believe. He said, what? I said, it's heavy for me to say because it's, it's, it's a private thing. He said, I said, you know your brother doesn't sleep with me. He said, ah, uh -uh, true. They now said, ah, maybe you know this pastor now. They, maybe he's praying at that time. Uh, maybe he's fasting. fasting at that time. And you mm. need to be very patient with him. I said, I'll be patient too. But this one night, the water is getting close to my mouth. And before the water will cover my mouth, I want to say so that people will hear. That one mm. said, there is no way I can ask him this because it's really, really private thing. Mm. He said, uh, Mary, I don't know what to do, but I will be praying for you. Mm. There, there was one of his cousins that I like so much. That, that's the only person I know that he said his cousin. I called that one. I told that one. So that one was crying. I was crying. I said, ah, Mary, I don't, I don't even know how where to start. If I go and ask him now, he will say, you are telling me his private uh, life. Business, yeah. yeah. Not to talk of the physical abuse. If I say something in the house, he will beat me blue and black. After beating me, he will kneel down in my front and be begging me, please. So, I don't so know what also, I do. He was beating you as well again, physically? Yes, physically. Mm. He will kneel down in my front and beg me and beg me and beg me. I will, I will sit one it. I will say, okay. Maybe this is how other people enjoy it as, as their own home, too, or you don't know. Mm. Hmm. Just like that. Oh, so, after that time, that guy told him in the church and said, if your wife comes from work, let her sleep. He woke me up one night. He said, eh, this marriage, how did I see this marriage? I said, you want me to tell you the truth? He said, yes. I said, I'm regretting every bit of this marriage. He said, eh. I said yes. He said anyway. Uh, it's not like I don't actually see that you are tired sometimes if you come from work. Home. It's because I don't have any sleep party for you. That is why I was still wanting to carry me to church. I said you don't have sleep party for me. I said what have I done? He you said I don't have sleep party for you. The pastor, your husband. Uh, then the sleep in my eyes disappear. I cried that night. I cried to walk, even at work. That that thing would just bite me. I would just bust into. Okay. They went to tell my manager that many has been crying since morning. Manager came, confide on me what is happening. I couldn't say what my husband said to me. That is not like he, he doesn't say that I'm tired when I come back from work, or oh, he says that actually I need to rest. He will still drive me to say. church. Mm. There was a day I was coming from work. I was on my period. I was waiting. I was already got dressed. I said, let me quickly back. He said, no, I'm opening prayer this morning. Wait, 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 wait. I told you not to go to work on Saturday. I said, but if I don't go to work on Saturday or the way they share the rota, how would this money complete? Or how would I get the full money for the month? You don't contribute anything. Hmm. Lazy man, Oluchi, a lazy man that is also not supporting you. I am so angry in my spirit. So this is the man that will, this is the man that will go to Mark and Spencer. Will go and look clothes. Will go and check the clothes that he wants. Then if I come from work, mm, 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 what is it? 
Mm, so that the house will be happy. So you uh, I just I just walked past uh, Mark and Spencer today. They are just doing some uh, half price. I wish I have money now. Oh, I wish I have money now. My trousers they are tightening me now. My shirt they are just shift. Ah, I will just give him my card. Mm -hmm. So okay, they, you know, they, they, they will pacify you and and butter you up, make you sweet. So that I will you give can him pay. my. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will give him my card. He will say it's only two trousers, two pairs of trousers I want to. He will come. It will bring four or five of pair and, and shirt. It, will, it won't. The whole of that we can go through my card or my uh, with my eyes, because he has spent what he said he wants to spend from that card. Twice I've gone to the police station hoping my card is in my bag. I bought four. No, no money to pay. Hmm. My goodness. This is. By the time he will return the card, if I, if I check, he has spent more than like two hundred fifty, uh, one hundred fifty, one hundred seventy. Uh, we say, uh, don't worry. Uh, if I if they call me in any work, I will bring uh, the work that you will go uh, towards the end of the work. Holy Spirit will say, don't collect money. Is that where you will bring money from? You know, Mary told me when we we're about to start that she wants to expose this man. She wants to put his name out there and really expose him because apparently he's gotten involved with another woman now. Okay, now let's get to how you ended it finally when you said enough is enough. Then because I really want you to be encouraged. I know you're a very strong so, woman, Mary, but what this man did, oh my God. So I wasn't having the zeal to pray anymore. If you say pray, if they ask us to maybe fast in the church from 12 to, to from 6 to 12, if a uh, uh, church fast is finished, he will say, uh, my dear, we will not break at 12, we will break at 3. 3 will come, he will say, we will break at 6. 6 will come, he will say, sometimes my body will be shaking, I can't even take what is close to me. I'll say, ah, my husband, I can't do this anymore because actually I'm not praying anymore. My, I'm hungry. And you know I have to take medication for high blood pressure. So my body says, let me do what I will say. No. Sometimes, it, at first I used to follow you do like 24 hours fast, you know. Because but it's not working. He can stay at home and fast for 7 days or 40 days if he likes. Because he's got no job. You are working at night. Night work is one of the most difficult things to do. It's not an easy thing to work at night. And you said you've always worked at night. And you are still working to make to make money, to pay the bills, to, to, to put this sleazy, lazy MF in your house. So, if I give him money to go and pay house rent, I, because I, some, I don't want to be out. Most of the things, I don't do it on my own. I will give him card to go and pay this, do this, so that at least he will be feeling like a man. He will go and pay the house rent, he will pay half. You will go and pay council tax, you will pay half. Then, if I now ask for the receipt, well, I will consider giving you the receipt. You always like this, you don't know where you keep the receipt. It's a lie, you didn't give me the receipt. Why are you giving him car to pay rent when you can do it yourself? Or set up direct, direct yeah, debit? I just want him to feel, I was just wanting him to feel like he's the head. No, if he wants to be the head, let him go and walk. Let him go and walk. Well, he said, the only spirit said he should not go and use oh somebody's path to walk. He doesn't want to do any black work. He doesn't want to do anything. Holy Spirit said he shouldn't walk. Holy Spirit said he shouldn't collect payment. What has this Holy Spirit not said? Oh. My goodness. And you believe that Holy Spirit said he shouldn't use somebody's path to walk. This is what a lot of people do here. There's no mm. shame in it. But Holy Spirit knows Mark and Spencer. I, I like what the comment that Common Sister says just now. Why didn't the Holy Spirit tell him to go and use prayer to pay for Max and Spencer trousers? So and shit? Okay. How did you get enough of this so, and decided so to go and get Towards the end, if you now say, sometimes I will say, okay, let's pray. Let's pray about the foot of the womb. We will agree for that prayer. But when we are praying, you will advise to my paper in the home office. Release my paper in the home office. Release my paper in the home office. Then I will open my eye. I will say, this was not our agreement. So, yeah. so you filed for him. I want to believe you filed for him at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. About the, the marriage certificate that, that vanished from my cupboard, he was the one that took it. Of course, we know that already. It was when he was going to file in, in uh, uh, with the lawyer to home office. We got to the lawyer's place. He now brought out the certificate from his bag. Then yeah. I went. I said, "This certificate, you make me. We are making me to look for it as if I was. I, I didn't know what I was doing, and I don't. I don't drink." Yeah, that's you point. Not saw, saw it in your own eyes. So you say, uh, when I was shouting in the uh, lawyer's office, so the woman was surprised and said, uh -uh, How can you steal your own marriage certificate again? You mm -hmm. say, uh, say, The lawyer doesn't know the kind of person I'm. I can just wake up one morning and tears. I said, Because I have a mental problem. If I didn't take my medication, I can just be destroyed. Mm. 
So all those ones, the the lawyer now. Yeah. The, Hello, Mary. Sorry, call is trying to come. There? The lawyer now yeah. come. Yeah, yeah. The call is trying to come in. The lawyer now mm -hmm. come in down and say we should put in the paper. Behold, after when we put in the paper, the home office came to arrest him for two months. He was in detention. Then Why I was going from Manchester. They said because he knows that they were going to deport him. They've already refused him. They, they, in fact, they were looking for him when he entered right. my life. Right. So, so they stay, they stay arresting. He was yeah. in detention for two months. Then I go to London twice every week. Ah, you have to come home. If you don't, if they didn't see you here, they will say the marriage is sham. It's not a genuine marriage. The Nigerian uh, authority that was going to sign his deportation, they said that I should come to the Nigeria house to see them. I went to the Nigeria house. It was a lady I met. I, when I was crying, the woman pitied for me. I said, okay. Uh, since, like, as you are crying now, Mary, I can see that this marriage is genuine. I won't sign his paper. On the day of his court, he didn't show up there. They didn't bring him in court. I was presented in the court. I lied in the dock. Mm. The, the, the judge knew I was lying. At the time, he now stopped me. Because it was what he told me that I know. I don't know anything about him. The judge now said, Mary, do you want me to cancel what you've been saying since? I said, no, I started start shaking. He said, you know that you just lied because what the paper in my front is saying is different it's from different. what you are telling me. And that's actually a crime. They could lock you up. This is another lesson because a lot of women come here and tell me they lie. They lie for their partners. They lie for the people that drag them. Even though they have been abused, they will go and lie for them to get paper. I have another person that, that, that said this. It's not only on this occasion. So if you didn't know that, if you go to court and lie, they can lock you up. It's against the law. You are breaking the law by lying in courts. Because I was you've checking, sworn, yeah? you sworn an oath to tell the truth and you are to lying. So just know oh, that. The judge now asked everybody that uh, it was two people that came with me. Uh, the uh, uh, cousin's wife and the pastor that he was doing the assistance with. So they now asked the two of them to come out. The woman now asked me, why did you lie? I said, if I tell the truth, it will affect him in church. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Because, yeah. uh -huh. He now said, next time I should not do it. And the reason why she's actually listening to me, I've gone through a lot. And he will release, he will release him to me. I will be the first church. If he run, if anything happens, I will be the person that's going to suffer it. I yeah. said he won't run. Yeah. So after all that are done, she asked me to sign as the first church. I took the first church and the pastor now signed as the second church. After two months and two days, they released him. Has he got the papers? Back. Did he get the papers eventually? I cancelled the paper. Hey! Oh, to rule best, 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 best. Hey. Tell me about that. I want to hear. We don't want hour, so we need to fast forward. What they happened? Got, they got him two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So we started living together. We are still living together, but he, didn't, he said, uh, I can't work for anybody. Uh, I want to open a business. I want to work for myself. You want to work for yourself, my dear. You need to start from somewhere. You need to gather money from somewhere and start using it to do whatever you want to do. You don't wait for me. Hmm. So, because call the whole story short anyway. This, uh, you didn't get pregnant thing was still going on. So, I do a job contribution. Mm -hmm. The contribution was for something else. But immediately I collect the contribution. I went to private hospital. To acquire for uh, IVF. IVF, yeah. So they asked us to come in. I paid. Uh, we came, we went in. We signed out the paper. Luckily, the doctor we even met there was an able man. The man spoke English and break pidgin English for us to understand the, we, what we are getting ourselves into. We both <laughs> we both signed everything and <laughs> agreed. They said, okay, uh, your treatment will start by next week. Because uh, it would have started with this week now, because they have something doing in the lab. Would they just start you next week? Immediately, we came out of the doctor's office. He said, uh, I'm not interested. He said he's not interested in the IVF anymore. Uh, so I screamed. The doctor came out and said, What? I said, ah, Doctor, this man that just signed paper with me and said he's not interested. The man called us back. The man tried to convince him and convince him, was just looking at the man. Then later, that thing just grew from my tummy. I said, you are on your own. I have two children already. You said you don't have. So 
That's their own cup of tea. You can go to her. I choose up and walk out of the doctor's office. Right. Then before we got to, we didn't talk to each other. For a week, we didn't talk to each other. We live in the same house. So I was coming from work one day. Whether he was carried away, I don't know. I met laptop on his leg. A lady was naked and showing him his bum bum. Mm. So immediately I said, good evening, just close the laptop. I said, people that have been asking, they say, patience, it's not everything that you see, you talk. Let me keep quiet so that we won't fight. Let me keep quiet so that we won't fight. Then after that one week passed, uh, my dear, I want to involve you in, a, in something that I'm doing. I said, what is that? He said, uh, I have a business. I've asked them to look for a store in Nigeria. That money that we deposited in uh, IVF, I need you to give me the money. I said, no, that money was not for IVF initially. But because any time I come inside, it looks it look as if it's me that is causing your problem. So I wanted you to be happy. That is why I brought that money out so that we can go and drive. What, about your, you own, you don't what want. about your own happiness in all this? What no. about your own happiness? Did it you ever happy think about happy. your happiness? Okay, me, happiness. I don't think of that. Oh. So far, if it's mine, me, I'm happy. Mm -mm. Okay, let's fast forward the story. The IVF didn't go, go on. Did you give him no, the money to no. do the business? No, no. I didn't give him. Okay, what did you cast for his paper? Yeah. After I knew he was seeing somebody outside. Yeah. There was this faithful day. Uh, I, I just took off from work. I was on my annual leave. I said, do you know what? I want to spend a quality time with you. Because sometimes if I come from work, I will spend two hours in the car outside my house. He says it's not always good on the only Even if he's laughing on the phone when I'm coming home, if as soon as I enter the continent, everything will just send as if I'm his problem. Hmm. So I said, let me spend quality time. This is the time we'll talk. And I, I even booked for holiday in Scotland. I said, let's go to Scotland. Let's just go and get away from this place, talk so that we'll put our heads in the right place. He said, okay. That money, he asked me to take him out. I took him out. He went to buy some few things. Uh, as soon as we get home, he changed his shape and just left. I said, where are you going? He said, I want to go and give somebody something. I said, okay. I waited till 6 o'clock. I didn't see him. Then I, try, I, I called him. As soon as I called him, he said, eh, I'm in Stafford. I want to deliver something to somebody. I said, but you said Piccadilly. He said, it's the same thing. I mean, so forth, and it's raining. I said, but here it's not raining. He said, it's raining heavily in so forth. Don't worry, I'll find myself home. That was the day the veil in my face raised off. I don't know whether he was trying. I don't know whether he was trying to put his phone in his pocket or the phone called me back. For me just to answer hello, I had a woman backing on him. Why are you lying in my presence? You did not tell her where you are. You are doing kube kube. I don't want this kube kube. You can't tell her that you don't want her anymore. Omo ibo she ah. Auntie, my stomach went. Brrr, I went to the toilet. My head was like I was in another planet. I was screaming his name. He, he, he can't hear me, but I can hear everything that he has saying. He was just begging the lady. Then I said, if I if I said this thing to anybody, nobody will believe me because if you do me anything, he will say nobody will believe you anyway. If you like go and tell people, they won't believe you. Yeah. I ran to the next compound. There was one pastor friend that is our friend there. I ran to her. I said, Daddy, put this one down. Listen. The man was saying, Sister Mary, put it up. I said, No, no, I won't put it up. Oh. I, I want you to listen. So you had the message. Went, yeah, even went ahead and said, eh, I told her that I was going to deliver something to somebody, but I came to meet you. If I don't have you in mind or I don't love you, I won't be here this time. It's, you know, it's cold mm -hmm. outside, blah, blah, blah. blah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I cried. I jumped up. I fell down. Nobody to say, Don't die. Sorry, nobody to say sorry. Hmm. Hey, okay, okay. That night, I called the agency that I'm one of my agency. I said, please, do you have a shift? Because if I stay inside this house, I will run mad. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they, they have a late shift. Then I just took my car. I went to work. But I was I couldn't do anything. I was just useless. Then, on the conversation between himself and the lady, the woman asked him, he spoke in and asked him, I said, so if I want to any, only OC, OC, Lossy Bishop. That means I have been carrying you to that lady's house with the taxi driver that you are using me to do. Because there are some places that it will say, take me to this place. We will park in the first or second street. We will go and say, wait for me in the car. 
We say, I just want to see somebody. I don't know who he goes to see. Then around 12, I tried to call him. He didn't pick until about after two. He now picked the phone. Just for me to know if he went home that night. I said, there's a number on the table near computer. Uh, the phone number, please. Can you just take the picture of that number and send it to me? He said, okay. Just put off his phone. The phone was switched off. Yeah. Yeah, so before I got home in the morning. Yeah. He has already reached home. This is the man, especially on Sundays. If he wants to go to church, he will wake up at six o'clock. He will use one hour to iron his dress that is his shirt that's going to wear to church. He will use one hour to carve the beer, his, his mustache and everything, to polish himself. Then exactly nine o'clock is ready for church. So seven okay. years, this man lived rent free in your house. It took okay. infidelity. You catching mm. him red handed with everything, financial abuse, spiritual mm. abuse, psychological, mm. emotional abuse. It took mm. this cheating that you caught him red, hand, red handed for the skills to fall off your eyes to know that you have been used, mm. you have been abused. So how mm -hmm. did you leave him? Or how did you chase him? And I want to particularly so, know how you left him and how you canceled those papers. I called, I called the other pastor. I said, mm -hmm. Daddy, please don't tell him about the phone conversation. I don't want to, like, this is when I was trying to, to think and, and think what is happening to me. I said, don't tell him about the phone conversation. No. I said, I will want to monitor him because he doesn't actually know the days I'm working. Instead, I tell him I'm working on so, 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 day and so, 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 day. Yeah. I said, I want to monitor him. The, the daddy now said, okay. But immediately I dropped phone. He called him and said, Labaja, this woman caught you yesterday. Just prepare yourself and know what to say. They are all together. They work together. They defend each other because they all do this rubbish. So <clears throat> I got home. He was just coming out from the bathroom looking for what to wear. I said, ah. I just pretended as if nothing happened. I said, ah, why is it not that you're looking for? Because that is the number one thing you do every Sunday morning. You iron your clothes first. I said, why is it not you are, that you are looking for what to wear? He said, ah, I prayed before four o'clock. I just slept off. Uh, I didn't even know when it was seven o'clock. I, I said, okay. He said, are you not coming to church? I said, no. He got dressed. The other pastor picked him. They went to church. Then me, I sat down. But I wasn't myself. Then the next day, the, my mind just said, go to church so that you won't go and kill yourself. I took dress, get dressed. I went to church. <coughs> but I was going to church. I wore a mini gown. I wore a mini gown. Immediately I walked into church. You know all these uh, uh, sabi, sabi people in church say, Sister Mary, this guy is too short for a pastor's wife. I said, are you looking at me or you came to listen to someone? Good. So she, then my husband now turned his head and looked at me. I sat behind him. You know when you catch somebody when that person is still or lies? He mm -hmm. started dancing on the chair. He will swing from the right. Are you listening to what they are teaching? Are you mm -hmm. listening to what they are saying? I said, if you turn again, I will give you a knock on your head. Face your phone. <laughs> And let me press you in the back. Mary, don't vest so. This time around, you were boiling. Hmm. I was really boiling. But I was trying to control it, but uh, it couldn't go down well. So when the pastor now said, when the pastor now had, the, the pastor of the church, the senior pastor now had, when I said, I will knock your view from the behind. The man left what he was doing. He now called about two elders and called two of us to his office. He said, uh, Sister Mary, I know you'll be mad at me. Uh, I couldn't sleep, but I have to call him and tell him the phone conversation what was what, what the past yesterday. Then they now, the other two guys now put their mouth and say, eh, what did you just say? He said, our uh, pastor was somewhere yesterday having a conversation with a woman. Sister Mary had everything. Please, can you tell us? He said, I was in the bus stop. Oh. I was in the bus stop because people that was in the bus stop that was talking. Uh, in fact, she doesn't even understand Yoruba. They were speaking Yoruba. They say, ah, how can you say Sister Mary doesn't understand Yoruba? There's no idea it person that, that doesn't pick some Yoruba. That's what some people don't know. I understand. Know. Only I can't put it in words. Lot, most I, people from Lagos can't go. pick Yoruba. Yeah, I live in Lagos for, for, for 10 uh, years before, hmm. before I travel. So I can speak, I can hear, but I can't put it in words. Because if I put it in words, they will be laughing at me. So I don't just bother to speak. But I can hear. If you say anything, I will reply you back with English. Then I said, okay, since you said this, the people from the bus stop that was talking. Just hmm. Swear this Bible, let's leave everything. He said, I, I won't swear the Bible. I said, you know, you must swear this Bible because you so believe in this Bible that you are reading day and night. I said, you have to, you have to swear this Bible. He said, he's not swearing the Bible. Then I didn't know when I picked up the Bible and slapped him with the Bible. Hmm. 
Then you jump on me. Yes, you jump on me in the pastor's office and pick the hell out of me. Right there with the pastor's weight. Right standing there. there. No, no, that, 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 they, they were trying to hold the two of us now. So you got, you were fighting? After, after they separated us, then the pastor now said, I heard really that you did beat this woman. So this is just a confirmation that you do beat her. He said, ah, you, this woman, if you listen to her mouth, before you kill her, you won't even know. She has bad mouth. She has bad words that come out from her mouth. The pastor said, but you are the one that offended her, even if she break your head. You, you don't have any right to lay your hands on her. So the story start coming now to that he has already had a conversation with the other pastor before that is moving out of the house without me knowing. And that pastor is calling me his goddaughter. He didn't call me and say, come on, your husband said he wants to move away from the house or what is happening so yeah. that I can bring this. Yeah. They but the pastor now promised him that, uh, okay, if you said you are moving out of the house, I will give you my paper to, to go and be working and I'll give you my paper to rent the house. But that in one condition- is a, is a devil. Hi, he was a devil from the beginning is that he didn't tell you why his first relationship broke up. And, it, and I'm sure he knows that he has children in Nigeria. He was probably married before, which you never knew. He, he, he no, just that was it. my... This, the pastor that, that knew about that was my own church pastor, not this yes. one. This one was just a, a family friend. that yeah. he, he took me away from my church that we married and brought me to this man's uh, church. So we were not attending my own church anymore. The same, we are pastor that, church. the same one that you confided it that he was in a woman's house that told him that told him it's not my original pastor that said god didn't show him anything this one was a different pastor right so then this one i told him now in one condition if i use my paper to go and get a house for you uh, you'll be letting sister mary come to the house i said ah, so you guys have this conversation pastor why didn't you ask him i said what is happening between you and this woman so let the church or you as a father of the church bring the two of us together i said let's discuss this thing Okay, you agreed that you will give him your paper to go and be working and rent a house for him, moving away from uh, his married house. The, the both of them are looking at me. I said, so I'm just dwelling in the midst of my enemy. Then you, I trust maybe you are, you are, you are a pastor and you know more than us, than, because moreover you are older than the both of us. I said I'm sorry. Then I just knelt and said, so, sorry, <laughs> it's been just too much from my mouth. I just knelt and said, my, you said it, yeah. Yeah, I said, my husband, please, let's go home. Said, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll have a Then we both came home. When he got home, he now moved his things to the other room. To our next other room. He was there for three days. I couldn't go to work. I couldn't think straight. Then on the third day, I went to meet him. I said, what have I not done as a woman? Where did I go wrong in this marriage that you want to pay me back with this? What comes out from his mouth is that if you can't bear it, divorce me. <sighs> okay. I said, I said, divorce you. He said, yes. I said, no, I won't divorce you. He said, hey, so bear it. Then as he was talking, he was lying down. So I was trying to pull him up so that he would sit down and we can have a conversation because he was not ready to talk to me anyway. Immediately, I just pulled his hand and pulled him up. This mouth get up from his bed. Beat me blue, black, you know, and see, when you are beating your enemy, when you are fighting your enemy, you know this person is your enemy. The kind of blood I was receiving was like iron. Hmm. In, in my head, in every part of my body was beating me as if there was no tomorrow. Then later I just took the, uh, my blood that I wore, my pyjama, tore it and used it to tie my neck. He said, I will kill you, nobody can find me. Hmm. When he was actually tying my neck with that, with that, uh, Pajamas. I had when my two eyes pump out from my head. Poof. I said, I'm gone. I'm gone. I fight with my last breath. My I fought with my last breath because I was screaming. My neighbors didn't answer. Nobody came to my rescue. Hey. I fought with my last breath. I fell on the bed nice. from the bed to the floor. So the way he was uh, like, uh, posing on me on the floor, it was not comfortable for him. He had to leave me. That's how I jump up. You know when you hit Putika, if you hit him the second time, the way he will jump. I was whether it was through when I passed or through my door, I didn't know. I went outside, naked I called the police, they came. What do you want us to do? Do you want to press charges? I said, no, just tell him to leave the house. The policeman was very angry. You don't want to press charges, then why did you call me? Exactly. Why did you call us? Mm -hmm. I said I just want I just African want you guys women. to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they asked him to leave. 
Then they start calling all oh, yeah, sorts of people by everybody. They were calling me, why will you call police for your husband? I said, did he tell you guys what he did before I call police? He said, I don't want to listen to anybody. At the about 12 in the midnight on that day, uh, the pastor close to my house now called me and his cousin. They said, uh, please. He said he wants to go and sleep in the church. pastor said, I, I don't want to give him the church key. Uh, the cousin said, uh, I said he should come to my house. He said, no, that he's coming to sleep in the gate house. Please allow him to enter. Then I look at his cousin. I said, the respect I have for you, my brother, is too big. I won't say no. But no, no, he said, I won't say no. It was just the Holy Spirit that brought that word out of my mouth. But by now, I would have been all right. Somebody almost killed you. Police came. You refused them arresting him. And they are still begging you that same day to allow him to come back. Auntie. That is what I'm saying, that it was only three that asked me to say yes. Maybe people will say it's because he fought with the husband yesterday, you know, maybe he's still crying inside the house. They will not have, have already died inside my house. So, so I, said, I, said, I said in one condition, if we go home together, he must not lie down in the other room, he must lie down on our bed. Then they asked him, did you ask me? He said yes. So we, and we both came home. When he came, he was lying down with all the clothes he was wearing. Me, I went to the other side of the bed and slept. So he came to your house again from the police yeah, station? I, 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 the police didn't take him to the police station. They escorted him to one place and said, look for a place to go. It's your wife. You can go and pay her later. And this is a man that just tried to strangle you with your own pajamas and you said it with your mouth that your eyes were popping out. You mm. thought you were going to die. Auntie B, listen now. He came home. I allowed him to come. He came home. He slept on the bed. Then about 6 o'clock, I was feeling pressed. Then I said, I was, I turned from the, my side, put my leg on the floor. My first move, that was the last thing I had. By the time I woke up, I woke up in a and &E. What happened? I went blank, boom. I didn't know what happened. He's from the, 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 the beating now. When I woke up, people were surrounding me. What happened? Then they were not asking me what happened. So I said, uh, I was pressed. I wanted to go and wait. Because that was what actually brought me out of my bed. They said they don't know that the situation they met me, they, it's not the situation that they will treat me at home. They have to bring me to the hospital. Then they started doing all sorts of S3 check, blah, blah, blah. They now find out that my vein that supplies, uh, uh, what do you call it? And energy my, to my head was blocked. Yes, because you are strong good. So when they find out, the, the doctor in charge were looking at me, he knew something happened, that that, that bed doesn't just block. That, do you know that you are a very lucky woman? If such thing happens to people, they might have brain damage, they might go paralyzed, they might just die. What happened? What happened? My pastor was looking at me, kwa, kwa, kwa. I couldn't say anything. Even there was a time they asked him to come out of the, the, the room. What happened? Did somebody strangled me? I said no. Then when he, when he now came back, I said, you see how God loves the both of us? If it was that money that you hold me, I called down. You would think I'm playing. You would say, ah, she's pretending. I'm just there. Then you say, ah, I didn't want to kill my wife. It's the children that I have not seen for years that they are going to take my cups to, or my mother that is saying I have a daughter in abroad. I said, you know what? I've had enough. This is it. I've had enough. Whosoever wants to laugh, let them laugh. Instead of them to laugh, Cry for me. I want them to laugh. I'm done. I'm not in anybody. Nobody forced me to this marriage. Two days later, they released me from the hospital. We both came home. He immediately, we came home. He just changed his shirt and left. He was coming, brought food. He put this food on the fridge and ate everything. The, the one that food finished, he went to bring another one. This was going about three days now. So I went to work. I didn't come back. If I finished my job, my... um regular job. I would call agency. I would go from, for three days I didn't come home. I was just going back and front at work. Just to try and figure out what I would do. So on that fateful day, the day that I go where I end this thing, I came back in the morning. As I was just climbing the steps, I just had the voice say, don't fight, oh. don't argue, just pick the key. And because if you want to enter and leave my house, you don't have key. That's, you are done. So I just took away my, I, I just Change. I took away my uniform, put on my simple dress, left. So immediately I left. I didn't, I didn't say what to him. He didn't say anything to me. I think he realized that maybe I picked his key. 
He ran out before he got to where I was. I was already in the car, the house at Block Bakan. Was he outside? That was, that was the end of Solomon Grande. Then he ran and called the pastor that, that is in Kokosawi. That one came, made it, give me the key. I said, when I was renting this house, were you there? He said, no. Did you contribute? So, he said, no, sir. I don't have any key. So you locked him out? I locked him out. Good. <clears throat> so as, they were talking, as they were talking, I drove. I just drove out. So he thought maybe I was going far. Before he could go around and around and look for me, I back to the house, entered my house, locked the main door to my, to my apartment. So when he came to the, when he now followed, uh, people to the house, the key was locked. When he was trying to open it, I said, don't worry, my dear, I've locked, go to where you want to go. That was the end of Solomon Grande. So how did then you transfer his papers? You said, immediately, you out. Mm. Yeah. immediately, he didn't even beg, he just went to the other lady's house. Yeah. And I called him with Jason. I called mm -hmm. a friend, I, I called a friend as a lawyer. He mm -hmm. said, you have to write everything on the paper. Mm -hmm. Since you have a police report twice now that uh, is an abuse, he said you can easily write to home office. If you don't know what to write, I will come to the house and help you. Then he came, I told him everything, he wrote everything, Bacala, put it in the envelope. I said it was a sham marriage. He married me for a paper, not for love. They said, okay, they can't do anything. And since they have two and a half years, they've already issued him two and a half years. When he wants to renew, that is where his broadcast will come out. And that is where broadcast fell. So then what he happened? Start, uh, he started coming to beg me. He started coming to beg me. Uh, my papers. I said, I gave you the papers. I'm taking them back. Let this other lady, let her start from where I stop. It's not fight. Mm. So that was the end of it. Mm. How long ago was this now? When did when did this happen? When did the seven years end? Uh, it turned in three years ago. And he's still in this country. It's the, the guy I, have, I heard that the guy has given him a child. Now whether he's the owner of the child though, now I want to get pregnant and give him up because it's it's good in taking people's children. I said he's the owner. I don't know. But I, whatever he's doing now is not my business. Seven go. years. You endured seven years. Physical emotional, financial, spiritual abuse, all because you wanted a husband and because you wanted a father figure for your adult children, of which mm. they, they didn't even need father figure because they're already adults and they live in Nigeria. And I'm sure you've got brothers, there are uncles that will be father figure. Not one, not one man that lives in Manchester that will be father figure to children in Africa. Mm. He wasn't even qualified to be a father figure to anybody. Wow, Mary. You went through a lot. You went through a lot. I want to thank God for your life. And I also want to congratulate you for finally receiving enough sense to know that, okay, you see what happened to you there? Where That place that you say was trying to strangle you. People mm -hmm. have been saying in the comment section that there was an artery there that was blocked. Oxygen was not supplied to your brain. It, My could, brain, have caused, yeah. it could have caused so many things. You could have, your enemy would have died in their sleep or your enemy could have had a stroke. That's what so they said in the hospital. Uh, my God, Mary, you went through the fire, but you've come out like gold, refined, and I know that you've learned your lesson now. Finally, uh, finally, before I open my comment section uh, for people to join this conversation to encourage you, what is the message and why did you want to share this story so desperately? So that if women, women, when you are with a man and you see that it's not 100% with you, just run. Don't wait. Run through the back door. Because uh, there are places I've cut out of this story. When I met him, I told him I had a project in Nigeria. I said, since we joined together, and it's not like you are working anyway. And right from time, even before I met him, I've been doing contribution, so I'm used to it. I said, uh, this money is coming to meet me at so-so time. Why not let's uh, do something in your own side. He said they have a land in Ibadan. My first contribution after two or four joined together, I gave him, I said, okay, let's start building a house. I will make sure I, I got hold of the one in, in Benin so that we'll have something together. He took the money from me. I never knew anything about that thing again, that project again. Poco. How much was it? I gave him 10000 
Oh, and I never had anything from that project again. If I ask him, he will say yeah, the pastor that is helping him is not is on the mountain, is on the tree, is on the river. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary, for sharing. I I celebrate you and I really, really appreciate you for having the courage to come out to share your story tonight with us. I mean, there's so much mixed emotion now. You know, people are angry, people are upset, people feel sorry for you, people feel bad that this man took advantage of your vulnerability, your desperation, and, you know, abused you. 10,000 pounds to a man who has never given you anything. He never loved you. He didn't want you. He just targeted you in church. And you said you thought he's a good person because he's a pastor, in quotes. But this is a devil, a demon from the pit of hell. Demon. That's what he is. And unfortunately, there are always women that are available and willing to receive demons into their life because they think they can fix it. Desperation. So before I, uh, I've shared my comment, thank you so much, Mary. If you want to, you know, to log out now so you can listen to people contributing, that's completely fine. I appreciate you. I love you. I celebrate you. And I want you to know that you are not alone. I'm sure that you already know that from all the stories you've heard on this platform, you are not alone. When, unfortunately, because we've been conditioned to think that until you are married, you are not complete. And you were desperate and he saw the desperation and he took advantage and exploited them for his own gain. Uh, but just know that um, God has got you. And whatever you've lost to this Mongo pack, the Lord will, will compensate you. He will give you peace. He will give you joy. And you will be stronger. And you will test your, your testimony will be complete. Even as Amen. you share this story today to others to encourage them, your testimony will be complete from glory to glory. For, and your power, you've taken it back. And you continue to empower other people by the grace of Amen. God. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's see, my sister. God bless you. So I will meet myself now so that I'll be hearing what yes. you say. Yes, yes, yes. So what I'm going to do, Mary, I will take you out so that people can come in because when people start coming in, uh, then uh, I need to take is a number of people that I can take. I shared my, my link in the comment section. If you want to come in to say something, please. Mary doesn't need any judgments, Okay. She does. Oh, Mary is the first person to come in. Oh, okay. It's the same Mary. Mary doesn't need any judgment to her job. She doesn't need any judgment. She doesn't need anybody to tell her, why didn't you see the red flag? She knew. Okay. She made a mistake. She's owned her mistake. There is nothing more empowering than a woman that say, I have made mistake, but I own my mistakes. Okay. So don't come here and say, oh, uh, didn't you know? Didn't you see? Didn't you do the... Mm -mm -mm -mm. We are here to... End. This is solution-focused platform, in case you have forgotten. This woman endured seven years of all sorts of things from a demonic, demon pastor who claims to be a pastor. It's never a pastor. Fake pastor. Tunde, that claims to be a pastor, a Yoruba man. Okay? And there are lots of them out there. And we hear he's already... It's already with another woman now. So two things I want to say, if you want to come into this, uh, uh, the, please don't call. You don't contribute by calling. There's a link in the comment section. And if you are watching me on TV, you can't see it. You can only see the link if you are using a phone, a tablet, or uh, a desktop, or what's it called, laptop, whatever. So it's only in the comment section that you can see that link that you can click on. People ask me all the time, how can I call in? You don't call in, there's a link. So you just click on the link, it brings you to the comment section, right? So guys, uh, please use the link and comment. Before I take my first person who is waiting, Sox is waiting. Uh, peace, your connection is not good. I don't know why your connection is not always good, peace. Uh, yeah, try and log in again. What I want to say before I add the first person is that, ladies, please, if you are here listening, you've heard Mary's heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching testimony, right? Uh, one thing, if you don't learn anything from this program today, learn that it is not your place to fix any human being. Okay? You are not God. You cannot fix anybody. Try, stop trying to fix men, women. Please stop. If a man cannot even pay your bride price, 
Why the world does he need a wife for? And we're not just talking about bright price now, culturally, because it's about transaction, about money. We are talking about being responsible, being financially capable of looking after a family. If you don't have a job, you don't need a wife, please, my brother. I'm not being disrespectful or being rude. What do you need a wife for when you cannot even feed yourself? Women, please stop thinking that a man is your project. He is not your project. You cannot fix him. You cannot change him. It is only the work of God to change people. Okay? So, what I see in this case is that there was a reversal of role in this relationship. This is my opinion. Mary completely took over the role of the man. And the man, in this pastor Fekutunde, became the woman. So, Mary was the one marrying. She was the one paying the bills. She was the one cooking cleaning, looking after this man, and he exploited her. A man would not want to be kept. Women, stop keeping men. It is their responsibility to marry you. Stop marrying men. Stop. When I say marry, you know what I mean. I put it in quotes. It is a man that comes to marry. The Bible says that he will leave his father and mother. A man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Women, please stop. This reversal of role that you think that you are the one that will fix everything, you pay your own bride price, you give him money, 10000 that you've not given your child, you've not used to pay to put in your in account for your child's postgraduate, for their university education, you give it to a man because ah, since we are married now. Does, did he ma make this fake man love Mary? No, he didn't. You cannot buy a man. You cannot fix them. Number two, giving your money. Stop giving your money to a man that doesn't love you. Won't change. The only good thing is that she didn't have, as much as she tried, God did that one for Mary that a child never came out of this union. Glory be to God for that. I just thank God because our God is not an author of confusion. Mary was doing everything to have a baby because she thought that having a baby would, would fix it. It would have made it worse. Women, having a baby does not make a man love you. Please stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. He doesn't. If you are in a bad relationship, don't try to get pregnant to fix it. It's not going to change anything. It will complicate your life and tie you to that person for the rest of your life. Right. I'm going to allow people to talk now. Soaks, I've got you. Unmute yourself, Mike. And, yeah. Good evening, Auntie B. <laughs> Good evening, my sister. I don't shout to you. <laughs> I tell you. We, we thank God for Mary being a survivor. Amen. It will have ended the other way, but God decided to show her mercy. Mm. Auntie Mary, God has given you a second chance. Very well. Use it very well to develop yourself, invest in your children. And to all the young men out there, we, ha we still have good brothers. There are so many good brothers out there. I give you thumbs up. And all those brothers that think women are their punching bag, you will meet your match one day. All I have to say is, Mary, thank God for God has given you a second chance. And this show is an eye-opener to all of us to educate our friends, to educate our family members. When I listen to your show, Auntie B, I use it to educate myself and I talk to my friends about all these things going on here. They keep telling me they don't, they don't know Obodo, Obo, Obodo Ibo TV. I say, how can you tell me you don't know Obodo, Obodo Ibo TV? <laughs> <laughs> Oh she, my God! She's everywhere. They, they, she's they shouldn't everywhere. worry. The ministry is moving to the permanent side, but by the time we build a permanent church, <laughs> <laughs> they will know us by force. We are going to the permanent side soon. So oh. I give, I thank God for you, and to Mary. As you go into this new week, the hand of the Almighty God is with you, and Amen. your eyes will open up. You you what you have lost in that seven years, you will see how it will come up immediately, and you'll be so surprised that am I the one? Watch Amen. and see. Amen. You have given, the, for the boldness, you have to stand and talk and to encourage we young women about this thing that has happened to you. You went into it and you came out alive. It's a big testimony. Congratulations. Take care thank of yourself. You. Oh, and to thank be, you, thank so. you. <laughs> bye thank bye. you. Wonderful <laughs> first caller. Wonderful, wonderful soaks. You are such an encourager. May the Lord bless you. Barry, I got you. Unmute yourself, please. 
Yeah, to my brother. I love that thing you sent to me this morning. It made me laugh so hard. <laughs> there, was a lady, there was a lady I um I introduced to your show. Uh she, she resided in uh in New York. I yeah. see thank you to me. I was laughing. I was like, no, I should be happy to do this as well. So mm -hmm. I yeah, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. So um good afternoon. Uh I hope you're having a great Sunday. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's sunny down here in Chicago, so that's it. Uh, I I heard uh, the lady's story, and um, it's it's just sad that she had to go through that. But the important thing, like what the last caller said, is that she came out alive because there are so many people who have already passed, who have already passed just through that route. They yeah, they're gone, but yeah, she's allowed to tell the story today. Uh, one common thing that I find in a lot of marital issues. People run to the church. They run to the church. That's the first, oh, I need to go to my pastor. I need to go yeah. to my pastor. I need to go to the yeah. church. But yeah. what a lot of people don't understand is the church is not equipped to handle a lot of the issues that they are not even trained to handle a lot of the marital issues that are being experienced. Yeah. There are professionals who handle things like this. Yes, they can handle the spiritual side, like, okay, uh, like patience and all of that stuff. But when it comes to, like, physical abuse, uh, do not uh, play his role as a man and all of that stuff, that is something that a professional should handle. So that's, that's, that is something that I've noticed, most especially with Africans, uh, Nigerians. Uh, we, we just run to the church, my pastor. And which brings me to this word, Pastor, it surprises me when I walk on the road. I, I say hi to somebody, and this guy is like, I'm probably, I'm probably older than him, or he's, he's about my age, and he tells me he's a pastor. Like, everybody's kind of title pastor now. Pastor. Yeah, I said it. Absolutely. I said I was going to add title to, the title to my name. I need that title too. Yeah, <laughs> because people don't like, people do not even have zero experience just wake up in the morning and just decide to like oh i'm a pastor i was called and this is just survival for a lot of people so um i, I do pray that a lot of people um listeners all around the world would learn from this and understand that if, if you have if you have issues if you have troubles if yeah i'm not i'm not minimizing that god can um you know work miracles and everything but he has also put in place certain structures, there are structures in place that you can go to, there are tools that you can uh, source and to, to, solve, to solve some of the problems that you're going through. You don't okay. have to go to the church and all that. Yeah, stuff. absolutely. Thank you so much, Barry. You know, my husband often said something whenever we have a conversation at home about, and I'm low, I'm, I'm like, you see what all these people are doing? He would say, you've forgotten that the church eh, is like a hospital. In the hospital, you have a lot of sick people. Is the same thing as church. Yeah? The church is full of sick people, mentally ill, physically ill, just name it. So because you meet somebody in the church doesn't mean that uh, <laughs> they are a saint too. Uh, and I thank God for Mary today because sharing her story is going to probably encourage this lady in the U.S. I have a lady in the U.S. who have been trying to bring out of a very toxic relationship. She keeps running around. And you know what? She keeps running from pastor to pastor. I actually like what you said, Barry, because this is what this lady is doing. She's jumping from one pastor, other fellow pastors to go and get advice. Hopefully, she will watch this show tonight and she will know. The man told her that if you tell anybody, I will take your children and send you back to Nigeria because she hasn't got a green card yet. But I've actually told people and thank God for the sisterhood that we have and the people that are trying to, you know, that, that always come forward to encourage, provide solution and to help people. The support groups that we have all across the world now by the grace of God, especially in the diaspora, Texas area, Houston, Texas, all that area. People are actually waiting to help her. But you know what she keeps doing? She keeps jumping from one pastor to the other, looking for solution, living with a narcissist that, She's, I think that she's in her breaking point. The way she talks, even you will know. The way she talks, you can see that. Okay. <laughs> I pray so. And I've got you. Unmute yourself, sweetie. Hello, Sister B. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Where are you joining us from? Oh, I'm in London. All right. What do you have to say? First and foremost, I just want to thank you for this platform. 
the work you are doing already is greater than any title you want to have. So that pastor title, you don't need it. No, Your I'm joking. Is already bigger than <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke, bigger than. <laughs> so, I know, my sister. I, I know. I know. Hmm. Your platform is already bigger than some pastor's platform, especially the fake ones, but God knows them. Yeah? And yeah. I just want to say thank you for that already. Thank you. And also for Sister Mary, I just thank God for your life because... This life, like I tell my cousins, not only one life we get. Mm -hmm. We don't have duplicates. We don't have two lives. Only one. I just want to thank God for her life that she was able to stand up on her two feet to know when to close the door. I just mm. thank God for that, that she was able to do that. And I pray that God will bless you because Amen. you are a good woman and you have yeah. a good act. Yes. I pray for God's blessing. God's blessing will continue to go with you. What you have lost in that seven years, you will get it over and over again in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will bless you. It will Amen. bring you the man that is meant for you. Amen. And I pray that when that man come, when you hear the voice, you will accept the voice. Amen. When he speak, I think you have the gifts of hearing, but when the Lord speak, I pray that it will give you that ear for you to be able to obey mm -hmm. that voice and go with it. So that when you bring the right person your way, you will not miss it this time around. Amen. That man was Amen. not made for you. But I thank God for your life that you were able to stand up and shut the door on him. Mm -hmm. I pray God will bless you. He will continue to favor you. A people that you do not know will bless you and favor Amen. you. Amen. Look at Auntie B in your life right now. I mean, you are teaching people a lot of things through this platform. And you will not end here. You will do more. Amen. Because this is like doing God's work. You are enlightening people. And Sister Mary, God bless you. And I Amen. appreciate God for your life. I thank, thank him you. for your life. Thank you. Just Amen. in your own word, in your own heart, just be thanking him that you are able to be here to see today and tomorrow, and you will continue in Jesus' name. Amen. I really sympathize yeah. with you, my sister. I really mm. sympathize with you. But above all, the Lord say, give thanks. Yeah. Give thanks because he did a lot for you. Mm. The fact that you are able to shut that door, give thanks for that. Mm. That's all I have to say. And don't worry about what people say. Mm. Don't worry about what people say. They don't pay your bill. Exactly. They don't pay your car for it, they don't pay your insurance, they don't pay your nothing. They don't feed you especially. So you owe people nothing. You owe people nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You pay your mm -hmm. bill yourself. So you have no explanation to nobody. So just live your life to the fullest and believe in God and trust in him. He will do right by you at the right time. Amen. Amen. Brilliant Thank call. You, Thank you so yeah. much. Wow. What a brilliant, yeah. brilliant call. I appreciate you, Anna. You've spoken so well. May God bless you. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Thank you for uplifting Mary up. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Tony, you are next. Oh, Tony just disappeared. I pressed on Tony and he just, boom. Tony, please come back. I don't know what happened to your connection. I've got Sister Pat in the building. Hello, hello. Can you hear me, ma? Yes, I hear you clearly, Sister. You're welcome. Right, thank you. You know, Auntie B, I want to really again thank you for this platform. It is so enlightening. If thank people you, would listen and take heed, we will avoid a lot of problems in our lives. Amen. And for Sister Mary, God spoke to you. Listen to his voice. When God speaks, listen to his voice. I am just so happy because as a registered nurse, I see battered women all the time. And what makes me so angry is they go back home to the, bat to the batterer, to the man who's been beating the hell out of them. Yeah. And so many of them have died at the hand of these cowards. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. 
Mary, I pray that God will give you double for your trouble. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that he will give you beauty for the ashes. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be healed mentally, physically, and spiritually in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that God will give you the desires of your heart in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, my sister, I am so, so sorry that you had to go through this. It breaks my heart to sit down and listen to this story of how this man abused you. Listen, anybody that's not married or anybody that's married and having marital troubles, please and please and please don't go to these pastors. No. Most of them are cheating on their wives. Yep. Most of them are doing stupidness. And then they want you to stay in a marriage where the man is beating you and almost trying to tell you like you did something wrong. My sister-in-law, her husband was beating her in Nigeria. They're saying to her, so what did you do to him? Hell, yeah. what do you mean, what did you do to him? He's not, yeah. your, you're not his child. Mm -hmm. Why is he beating you? Yeah. So, and now he's handicapped, he can't walk. He has yeah. stroke, he can't talk. Who's taking care of him? The she. wife that he battered. Yeah. You know, I mean, ladies, please, let's be wise. Let's be wise. Leave these pastors alone and these churches alone. Most mm -hmm. of them didn't get any call from God. They didn't get any call. It's a way out of poverty for many of them. Please yeah. and please, my sister. Sister Mary, I'm praying that God will heal you of all your pain. Your Amen. story is very pathetic. But God is a healer and he will heal you. And if Amen. it's your desire to marry again, I pray that God will give you the right man. And listen, Mary, listen to God. When he's talking, listen. He didn't even do yeah. still small voice with you. He did yeah. loud he voice. You. Yeah, yeah. He, told he did that. loud voice. So mm -hmm. it's like you couldn't mistake it. Forget yeah. these church people and oh, yeah. you're not married. Oh. Don't worry about that. In time, you get married to the man that God has for you. Not to these, uh, I don't even know what to call them. Charlatans. Mm. That's it. They're even yeah, worse charlatans. than charlatans. Yeah. They're even worse than charlatans. How can you choke a woman until you block her artery? Yeah. What kind yeah. of nonsense is that? A woman that's taken you, he fed you, clothed you, paid what? your rent for seven whole years. What? Mary, mm -hmm. you're really good, you know, because I think I would have broke something over his head the night he came <laughs> home with me. I think I would have broke something over his and tell the police something fell on his. I don't know. Something would have had to happen to him that night. Yeah. But please, thank my you, sister, Bart. just be wise. I thank you, Auntie B, for this platform. Thank you, Sister Bart. God yeah. bless you. You're a good God woman. Bless you God too. bless you. You're thank a you, very good woman. Your children, your husband, they shall all be a blessing to their generation Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank, thank you, Mom. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Pat. Oh, I I'm blessed with lovely callers tonight. Oh, my God. The three people that have joined in, oh, my God. You guys have blessed us so much. God, I feel like we are in church. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Mary, I hope you are feeling blessed. Where are you? Mary, okay. You're here. Mary, okay. I hope you are feeling blessed, Mary, because uh, this is too, this is this is church. This is I feel I feel God in my spirit now. I feel God. Right. We've got Tammy. Tammy is next. Hello, Tammy. Tammy, unmute yourself, please. Hello, right. Auntie B. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And you? Not too bad, love. What do you have to say? Where wow. are you joining us from? So good. So good to hear. This is my first time of joining you live. And also, I was lucky to also get you. Wow. Let's talk to Welcome. you. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, where, where are you joining us from? Okay, I'm joining you from the UAE. Okay, UAE. Wow. Long, long. UAE. You're welcome. What do you have to say to our sister? Mm. Uh, first of all, Auntie B, I want to thank you for what you're doing. You're, I think you're really God sent to our generation. Thank you. I really want to thank you. Um, I actually came across the platform, like, uh, I think, three months back. And mm. since then, uh, it has really been a blessing. It has really been a blessing. My first uh, five messages I had uh, your shows I, I came across I watched 
We are all stories of uh, failed marriages, abuse, and all that. Actually, I'm still single. So, you know, all that discouragement and all that. But after the fifth one, I think the second and the, um, uh, sorry, the, the sixth and seventh show I watched, when I showed you talking about uh, marriage that are working, that are doing, um, going well, and all that, I'm like, okay, good. We still let, have good ones out there. Let, yeah, we do have good ones, but what I will say to you, Mary and Tammy, the, the, it, Jesus said that those who are sick do not need phys physicians, okay? So, because yeah. we bring women who've been through abuse, those who have been battered, those who've suffered trauma, does not mean that they are not happy marriages out there. But those who are sick do yeah. not need the doctor. Okay? This yeah. platform yeah. is for women or men, is for people to come and express themselves about their situation, okay. to find to yeah. find a voice, to testify yeah. of okay. God, what God has seen them through. For them okay. to encourage others, to even share, yeah. just to yeah. people like you are not married, so that you will see the red flags and you will know it, so that you will learn. Yeah. It is not I to say that there are not there are no happy marriages out there, please. Okay. 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 I don't okay. want people Thank to you. feel like that's what we are trying to achieve. <laughs> no, Thank we are not doing that. Question. Seriously, I had yeah. I was I was really scared. The first five videos I watched, like I was I was really scared. But thank God, thank God, I I kept following up and I started seeing stories. God bless you so much. You're doing a good job. Uh, as for as for Mary, I want to say. God um, has, you still have a long way. God has, I think God has a lot for you ahead. For him to, from the fall, from the beginning, you saw the wet plants and he still kept you for seven years. You, you went through all that and you still came out. You didn't come out uh, broken. You came out strong. And uh, at the right time, God um, opened your eyes to see this is the right time for you to move. It means you really have that um, Holy Spirit in you. So, just keep it up at that time if it's the will of God for you also. Of course, it's the will of God for every woman to be in a happy place and be a happy man. Um, so yeah. God will bless you again. I know I believe God will bless you again for uh, picking up that bold step. Uh, decide to walk, walk, walk out of an abusive relationship. You shouldn't be one paying a man's bill. God has God saw your heart and saw how open how sister you were, and He saw you through all that and allow you, allow you to die through that process. God will bless you and He will keep thank it you. you. I want to say thank, thank you, so you for coming to this platform to share your story. Thank you thank so you, much, Jamie. Amy. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much. much. Be, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Don't be scared. Just shine your eye, okay? Okay. <laughs> don't be scared. Just shine your eyes so that you don't enter one chance. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. That's what you so should take you. away from this. Uh, we are not. Yes. We are not doing this to terrorize anybody to make people feel scared of relationship or marriage, but rather it's for you to see what could happen if you don't shine your eyes. You go enter one chance. So I think people who are single say should be grateful for all these stories. These women that are so bold to come and share their stories because they've been through it. When I hear people saying, oh, I'm, I, I have anxiety now watching all this show. I'm anxious now. It's not about you, okay? This is Sorosuke generation, and I don't want anybody to feel like they need to watch. If you don't want to watch, please. There are other channels where you can watch gossip. You can watch pastors' stories where they talk about Suleiman. Suleiman channel plenty, okay? <laughs> Suleiman channel plenty when they talk about Pastor Suleiman, but we are here for something very serious. So yeah, let's celebrate these women and appreciate them for having the courage, the boldness to come and share. They are taking their power back and God is using them to open eyes everywhere. A lady called me from Los Angeles yesterday and said to me, Auntie B, this is what I went through 25 years ago. There was no platform like yours. If I'd known all these things that you are sharing. If I had seen this, I would not have entered the one chance that I entered. So this is what it's all about. Shade, I've got you. Auntie B, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Good afternoon. I'm calling from the US. You're welcome. And like everyone else, I want to thank you for this platform. I've been uh, watching your videos for a few months now. This is my first time uh, calling in. Oh, so I just wanted to say you. a few things. <laughs> I want to say a few things. So um, I, I often find that our Nigerian men, they use our um, age to coerce mm -hmm. us into relationships and marriages. Yeah. I'm in my um, I'm in my early 30s and 
if you know if I go on a date with a Nigerian man, the first question that I get uh, asked is why am I still single in my in my thirties? And I always throw the question back at them, like why are you still single when you're in your thirties or your forties? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> ridiculous I, question. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. I know. Mm. Like my, my as much as my parents want me to find someone and get married and have kids, they'd rather me uh, remain single than to go into a bad marriage. So I, I thank God that my pre- my parents don't pressure me into a marriage. They want me to first find someone who is stable and who is sane and who is godly and who's a good man first mm. uh, before anything else. Um, and on the point of bride price, um, I think paying bride price shows your commitment to that person and their family. If you cannot pay the bride price, if you cannot sacrifice, if you cannot work, if you cannot find the money to pay the bride price, and there's you no, shouldn't be there's getting no married. You shouldn't there's even no marry at all. Get married. Not no, at all. Not that's at all. like the most basic thing you can do. It's the first thing, really, that you know welcomes you into your marriage. If you can't do that, then the marriage is doomed. And I also think on the, on the point of being supporting someone. Um, I, I can never support a man that I'm not married to. And I also don't ma- I expect a man to support me. I earn my own money. I, I pay for my own bills. I support my parents. I can't expect you to support me. And I won't support you if we're, if we're not married. If we're in a relationship, I do expect for us to share bills and for us to, uh, manage the household together. But before we get married, I can, I can never send somebody money. I can't ever do anything because at the end of the day, I do believe in, uh, uh gender roles and not to say that I won't be supporting. Or, or paying bills in a household. But I, I believe as a man, you should be the head of the household and, and that comes with paying and supporting the family. Not that you should do it yourself, but you should yeah. carry the majority of the expenses. That's my yeah. own belief. Um, and I also think that the last point is that um, on, on someone marrying someone who one, isn't in the country or two, isn't in the country legally, there's enough Nigerians in America, in England, in whatever country <laughs> that you're in to yeah. find someone there. You don't need to import a husband or a wife. You don't need to be yeah. someone who doesn't have papers because you never want to have that doubt in a relationship that this person is using you for your papers. So yeah. I know first thing, if I meet a person and they say they don't have papers, I always, unfortunately, that would not even unfortunate. I always cross that person off because I never want that doubt in a relationship to, in the back of my mind, they're using me for my papers. So, yeah. and there's, there's I, I live in the DMV area, the DC, Maryland and Virginia area. Yeah, There's, yeah. there's plenty of Nigerians there. For mm. for for me to date that have that are citizens yeah. that have their papers, yeah. you, just, you just need so, to open your eyes. Don't think that absolutely. you know because he's in church, he's a saint. That's a mistake people make. Sick people are fooling in the church. They're in, in the church. Some people are cr- crazy, completely crazy. nutters, and they hide it under spirit, spirit, and reading Bible, and you know, pretending to be godlike. They are not. By their fruits we shall know them. This is what the Bible mm. says. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so That's much. That's all Shani. I had. That's all I yeah. had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. you. Shine your eye, smart young lady. I agree with you. Shine your eye. Don't make the mistake that people have made. That's why they are sharing to encourage you, so that you shouldn't make this. You wouldn't make the same mistakes. Somebody made me laugh here. Abdullah, where are you? Abdullah, you made me laugh. Uh, no, Ibrahim. He said. Our dollar, he said, Auntie B, the day I became I become a pastor, that day you stop watching. Why you uh, somebody cannot come and play with you? Okay, if I become pastor, you stop watching. Ah, you don't want me to be mommy Gio. <laughs> ah, our dollar, that one for you. Why are you like this? Somebody cannot play with you at all. <laughs> no, that's all a joke. It's just we're trying to bring some humor in because the tension is high to the roof. Yeah, the emotions are too raw, so we'll try to diffuse it with some humor. All right? No, no, that's not my role. I know my place. Thank you. D, I've got you. Hello, Auntie D. How are you? Uh, I'm all right, sweetie. You're welcome. Where are you joining us from? We have done two hours. We need to move quickly. I know. Yeah. Why is the one is my own? You now realize we've done two hours now. I'm we've sorry. Hours. Have I done that before? Have I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, now I'll allow you. Um, Go on. That's okay. Go on. Um, I'm mm-hmm. calling from the UK. All right. I'm going to be quick. Um, sure. I really thank Auntie Mary for her testimony because for experience, because I when I heard what she her experience, what I could think of is yes, I have not been through that, but I've been through other things. I've made mistakes before. And I was so grateful for her to share it because one of the issues we have in the African culture is that we never share people's mistakes in a good way. Every time we talk about someone's mistake is to tell us to, you know, laugh at the person, tell us how we should not be that person because, you know, you'll be disowned, people will mock you and all those things. 
but that it's is robbing you from learning very important lessons because we are not taught that it's okay to make a mistake you know it's okay to listen to your intuition we are just told i just have to go and just you know uh just forget about everything it's about how you look you know when i was listening to aunt mary i realized that she did so much to mm. be a good wife to this man yeah but at no point in her story and this is not a criticism to her by the way i respect her very much and um, but at no point did i hear her saying god is this really you because how can this be my life no but she said it she said that she didn't pray in no, her no, I church know. i don't know if you picked up from the beginning if you were here when she started yeah I've when been for the beginning yeah mm -hmm. yeah she didn't pray she she acknowledged that that she didn't see god's face no, no, no. I wasn't saying it like this. I know what you say, Auntie B. I wasn't saying it as a criticism. When I'm saying like at, at one point, what I'm trying to say is that it's so ingrained in us that we need to yeah. go through utter suffering. That yeah. when the suffering comes, we just embrace it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. I, I heard when she said she didn't pray about it. But what I was trying to say is that we we agree we support perseverance so much. If she yeah. had come here now and given the yeah. story, and then at yeah. the end of the story, she'll have said, Then I prayed, then he changed. Everybody was like, ah, see Thank how God. God do you understand? Mm -hmm. We yeah. are not taught that yeah. God can tell you to leave a situation. Yeah. yeah there's no that... there's no medal for suffering. Nobody yes, gives they... you a medal for the most long suffering human being on earth. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what women need to know. It's mm -hmm. the African culture. We we really give gifts, medals for, for, for suffering, as yeah. if God is only present in the suffering. You know, mm. and it's like, and that's a big problem. And I'm very happy she came and talked about it because we are made to feel guilty sometimes as, as African when yeah. good things happen to us. You know, even yeah. if you have money, they'll say to you, oh, you have to help somebody. You, th th it's never that sense of God can be blessing you because he's God. There's always like, he's doing it because you have to help somebody. You have to do this. You have to do that. And I'm glad that we are not coming as African to understand that God did not create you as a plan B for somebody else. The same God that you everybody prays is accessible to everybody. So it's not like you have to bear the pain of everybody, work very hard, do everything you have to do because you need to help another person. And I think as an African mentality, we've been made to feel guilty if we are successful, especially if everybody in your environment is not successful. Then they start saying, yeah. God bless you so you can bless somebody else. And mm. it's utter nonsense because that's how you suffer and you bear so much more than you can. And people still expect you to bear more. And I'll say this and I'll end. At one point, I think Auntie, Auntie Mary said something like she was asking the guy, like, have I not been a good wife? What have I done to you? She said mm -hmm. even at one point she went to a pastor's office and she knelt down. Yeah. There's one thing I want to say is this, because I've noticed that in a lot of us Africans, we yeah. need too much outer validation. Thank you. And I'm saying it for myself as well. Like I said, it's not criticism on Auntie Mary because a lot of us were raised like this, right? Mm -hmm. We need a lot of validation, word of affirmation. We need people to say, ah, you're a good person. Oh, you are so good. God will bless you. Da, da, da. We've been so used to that that we seek it from other people without realizing. So sometimes when you realize that you've done your best, because a person who you've done the best to doesn't acknowledge you've done your best, sometimes you stay longer because you're like, okay, I'm going to stay until you really realize the best I've done. Without realizing that, that person may never understand that. We've never been told that the problem is not you. Sometimes it can be other people. We are too flexible as Africans. You know, we can do everything. We can, you know, every time we're trying to mold ourselves to every single environment. And it's a problem because as an individual, you need to have a specific identity. Again, I'm not bashing Aunt Mary, please. But I had to learn that for myself. We need to have an identity where your flexibility cannot be to the core of who you are, to the point that you are suffering. But because everybody else is saying, ah, try again now, you know, marriage, is because she said at one point, like people, she said, uh, sometimes people said to her, like, ah, maybe that's how her parents suffered. Maybe yeah. that's how it is. But that's not normal. Yeah. So yeah. I'm so going to do that and, and leave and just say, please. Um, let us all wake up now and realize that, you know, we are also lovable people. We don't have to suffer to prove to somebody that we are who we say we are. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dee. I appreciate your call. And I think the point there is that we need to self-actualize who we are. We need to come to a place of knowledge regarding who we are as a person. You don't need another person's validation. You don't need to suffer. Okay? Just know that you are enough. You are enough. You don't need anybody to compliment you. Like Mary was saying something about how she would dress up and be waiting for him to say something. It's nice to have, to have people compliment you and say something nice. But if nobody compliments you, compliment yourself. Look at the mirror and say, 
I am fearfully and wonderfully created by God. Ah, look at me. Malicha. Omoto do. Praise yourself, sir. Sir yourself. You know how your Bible say, sir. Come and sign you. Sir yourself. <laughs> Make sure you sign yourself properly. Face the mirror and say, look at my nose. Everything about me is perfect. I am God's gift to this world. I am God's instrument. Any man that has me is a lucky man. I am a prized possession that he should be praising God every day that he has me. Yes, I agree with you. You need to sigh yourself and love yourself because we have a lot of issues about self-esteem and not realizing how powerful and how wonderful we are as human beings. Yes, redefine who you are. Forget about what we've been taught and what we've been, you know, our enslavement mentally about how we need to seek this from others. I appreciate that call. Thank you. Moji Shola, I have you. Hello, Moji. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm happy to be here, to be live. Good evening, Sister Bridget. Good evening. I'm coming from Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, lovely uh, to have you. How are you? I want to say, I, I want to <laughs> say, um, of course, there we are there. Oh, of course, of course, we are there. <laughs> and I want to say hello to all the Obodo. I want to Obajeti. Okay, let me start Obajeti. And I want to say hello to all the Obodo family, Obodo family, yeah. and to uh, Sister Mary. I say congratulations. I say I really say congratulations. But I would not want to, my in my own point of view. I want to come in from getting to know pastors, and I want to come from this point of view that. Especially with females, we fall for them. Especially yeah. when someone you meet the pastor, he prays for you, and mm. he's able to tell you accurately something that happened in the past. Yeah, and that is where they that's where they catch us more. Mm -hmm. So, what am I trying to say? We have to we ourselves have to learn to understand, read the word of God, study the word of God, so that because someone is telling me and um, this tell tell what is able to tell me the story of my past accurately, that does not make that person a man of God. Though that is what I've realized. If, I, if was, you go to Ifa, but you sorry to cut you. Ifa, <laughs> if you go to Ifa, Ifa will tell you the story of your life. Ifa, if Ifa and all these goddess and all this African spirituality can tell you about your life, then what what is the big deal? Somebody telling you a prophecy that is true about yourself. It's no big deal. The fact that somebody sees a problem in your life doesn't mean that they have the solution. We said it many times on this platform. Thank you, thank you, Sister Bridget, because. On the long run, they, because on the long run, pray and uh, do three days fasting. So, I, I, I'm not saying it's that God does not answer. If it, everything be, be, no, it is you. It is your faith. By the time they say three days fasting, the thing is still there. And then yes. by the time they tell you someone, someone is a witch, someone is, if you, if we, I want to encourage us to try to get to know our God ourselves. So, but I'm not saying there are no good pastors. I'm not saying there, are no, there is no person, they can't direct us. So by the time a pastor is telling you something that is wrong, someone is telling you your mother is a witch, you'll be able to go to God. You'll not take it to line and sink her. You'll be able to go to God yourself. That Father, please show me. Yes, there's someone that said my father, mother is a witch. Can you please talk to me too? No. And then, as you said, then in fact, if you get to you know what, what people are going through, one can be afraid. People that are single can be afraid to get married. But as you said, that is not, there are still good pastors. Yeah. But then I want to tell you, I want to encourage us too that even when we see all this, another thing that we fall for, you know that some people, some pastors are good or uh, or um, or how would I put it, they speak well. So mm. we fall for them too. Orators. By the time they come yeah. to the people, yeah, orators, orators, thank you. That 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 yeah. yes, that is the word I was looking for. Yeah. By the time they come to the pulpit and the peace, I will fall for them. Ah, is you say they are good and true man of God. That does not make them true man of God as well. Yeah. So, but there are these things. This, as I said, the red, red flags. A pastor that is borrowing money, you get to see them. They borrow money; they will not pay on time. There are lots of things, little little things. We have to watch out. You know, as a, as ladies, we have to watch out for. And I, even with this, I'm going to when listening to her, I want to. I'm going to encourage my friend to come to the, to come and share a story too. She was married to a pastor, and she, you know, on the long run, she had to get out of the marriage. The man, the man. Made, made, made that separate from appearance, said the appearance is a witch, everything like that. So, and so, but and, and, that, and that's by and that's by the way. So, I just want to encourage us that we, we, we should be careful of this pastor pastor thing. I have, I have a pastor mommy that told me elder people that they told me that you know, the pastors that what they are going through, and that is one of the things we fall for that, um, 
that everybody is going through it. And if everybody is going through it, that person is not me now. <laughs> it's not, that the person does not have to be me. Normalizing that is what abuse. We have to look Normalizing yes, abuse. Yes, because Making that is one of the normal. things. We, mm. Yes, that is one of the things that makes people stay stay in. Stay Everybody in. is not going through okay. it, by the way. Everybody is not going through it. I raise my hands up. I have never been abused physically, mentally, emotionally in my life. To the glory of God. It's not because of anything. It's just because I've come to a place even before I got married to say that, you know, I'm not going to accept it. It's what you are willing to accept, to put up with, that you will live with. The day you wake up, like Mary said, and said, no, I, I, this is it. I'm drawing a line. Today, you are leaving my house. He left. Okay? So this is what um, we ladies okay, need to uh, learn, that the day you draw the line, the nonsense will stop. No matter. And uh, okay. um, finally, I want to encourage we ladies, whether the still young or even the old that wants to try marriage, that we should not let the cancel you no know, no one you want to go to go for um, get married. Cancel there's always marriage cancel in the church. We should take it a step further to go for the paid ones, those that have gone to school. Yes. To learn right. some things that the, those that are psychologists. Not this one, the, what they will teach us in mm -hmm. so what they will teach you in church is what the Bible says. Yes, of course, we need to learn what the Bible says. We need yeah. it. But then yeah. we still need to go a step further now to go to people that have gone to get training. Yeah. So that we can know everything, we can merge everything together. And I pray yeah. that God will see us true. Amen. God bless you, Sister you Video. Your Thank platform you. is a real good one. Thank you. Mojishola. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Sister Mojishola. I appreciate you. Bawaki Boboiko. Greet the whole of Lagos. We send them our love and light. Thank you so much. Yeah. We are wind, winding up now. We've done so our you guys know the way time goes there eh? when we are sharing these stories for you know. It does go pa pa pa. It goes, yeah. We do not need to normalize abuse. It is not normal. Everybody is not going through it. Let us stop that fake story of everybody go through it. No, everybody doesn't go through it. Don't live with it. You don't have to. Okay. All right. Lily, I got you. Hello, Miss B. How are you? I'm all right. Good evening. Where are you joining us from? Dallas, Texas. You're welcome. Thank you. I just want to say uh, for Mary, from a uh, survivor to a survivor, I am very, very proud of you that you left because Thank a lot you. of women die in that situation. And I hope you take it a step further and get the, <clears throat> the mental health that you need, the counseling that you need, because you're going to need it. It's, yeah. Abuse stays with you and it damages you. And it yeah. took me three years to realize that. And for the lady, the nurse that says she doesn't understand why they leave. What abusers do is they isolate you from your loved ones and mm -hmm. then they cut off your finances. When I was ready, because I was a very strong woman, I was a feminist, um, I, I didn't know when it happened. It kind of crept up on me. Yeah. And when I realized it and I said, I have to leave, at this point, um, I went to my bank account. He has emptied the account. I had no way of leaving. He's yeah. a pastor in the church. I had no one oh, to tell. Who would believe he's me? A pastor. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a pastor. He's a youth pastor at that. He's such a charismatic man. Man, yeah. that everybody, nobody will believe me even when I went to his pastor to say, hey, this is what's going on. The man made me look like a demon. But mm. I knew who I am. I know who I am. I know I'm telling the truth. So, you know, I was determined that, you know, I was going to get out of it one way or the other. So I, I remember getting on my knees and I told God, I know I'm going to die here. If, if you're not going to help me and I'm going to die here, please take my mother away first. Mm. I, I don't want her to bury me. I know like wow. how it feels to lose a child. That's I don't hard. want her to have that pain. Wow. So I, I'm just saying, when you see women that are all of a sudden isolated, please reach out to them. Mm. Please reach out to them because they, they really do need the help. Because mm. what if they do, abusers first thing they do cut you off from all your support system so yeah. please be that support that the woman need it was someone that gave me like a hundred dollars to escape that marriage hmm. hundred dollars the person gave me a hundred dollars and i ran away when he wasn't there and i went to a shelter so wow. please look out if you say anything strange talk to the woman Maybe mm. you can save her life because it's not by choice that a lot of women is there. They don't have yeah. a choice. They have no finances mm -hmm. and they have no support system. He has turned everybody against them. Yeah. So 
Ms. B, thank you for this program. It's, it's, thank uh, you. It's, thank it's you helping so a lot of people. And thank you, uh, Mary, for sharing your experience. And please get the help, every help that you need. And I'm yeah. so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mary says, thank you. Thank you, Lily. I appreciate you. Your healing will be permanent as well. In Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> Abuse is not normal. Let's not normalize it. So, Sorosuke generation is here. We refuse to live with abuse. Our culture tells us that it's normal. I like what this person said earlier on. One of our subscribers here said that. And the, saying that, oh, if people open up and tell you what they are going through, you, you will know. No, no. We said no to that. Duchess, thank you very much, Ingeri. You said, they keep saying things like, if people begin to open up about what is happening to them, you will stop complaining. No. We say no to silencing people, to encouraging people to live in abusive relationship. If you do not take anything away from this show tonight, please understand that because somebody is a pastor, you've seen many women that have come to share. And I tell you, there's one going on at the moment that she's refusing to come out and she's not ready yet to that point because she still thinks that if she goes to other pastors to solicit help and to report him that he will change. Abusers do not change, okay? They don't change. Being in the church doesn't make somebody a bad, a good person. It doesn't make them a saint. The title of a pastor is just a title. Anybody can become a pastor. Anybody can say they are a pastor. You don't need to even have any knowledge. It's just for you to be reading Bible and quoting Bible and saying that. Some of them don't even train. That's how bad it is now. And that's one thing I really like about the Catholic Church. It has a lot of faults. I'm not saying that, you know, is the, the, the best place to worship. But I like the fact that you cannot just become a priest in Catholic Church without doing significant years of training. They train you so much that by the time you come out and say you are a priest, ah, you know that you've been through the fire. So these days, hmm, anybody can say I'm a pastor. Sick people, mentally ill people, they plenty for church, both men and women. Don't meet somebody in the church and think that they are perfect because they are pastors or they are church and spirit, spirit brother, sister. Abuse is covered in the church. A lot of churches cover abuse. They side with their pastors. They tell you, live with it. Everybody is going through it. Pray. And I want to say one thing before we end. No, very rarely you see a pastor that will tell you to leave your marriage. Very, very rare. No matter the abuse that you're suffering, physical, mental, emotional, psychological, financial, they will never tell you to leave because they'll say, God hates divorce. Okay? But God doesn't want you to die. God does not want you to end your life suddenly. God wants you to be alive for your family. God wants you to be alive for your children. God wants you to reap the fruit of a labor. God doesn't want you to be exploited. God doesn't want you to be financially abused. God doesn't want somebody to hook your neck with your pajamas, tie you in the neck, so they, the arteries that supply oxygen to your, to your brain is, is blocked. No. If you go because of this kind of abuse, because you refuse to speak up and seek help, God will not, you will not say, God, I was following your word because you hate divorce. No. This is the brainwashing that we received. Okay? We can count so many big, big pastors in Nigeria that are divorced today. Some of them are remarried. And the, the so-called followers that are still following them did not tell them, Pastor, but God hates divorce. Don't allow anybody to manipulate you spiritually. If you are in an abusive relationship, please run. Speak up. Okay? Speak up. Reach out. So, uh, we're drawing the curtains here today. Thank you so much, Mary. Is there anything else you'd like to say before I end? I'm just going to say a big thank you to all the people that have contributed. Even the one that was not able to call uh, because it's the eye opener. I've learned my lesson. Even if this yesterday, I took a lady in that, that the husband threw outside. And I will make sure that man suffered for it because I'm going to extend my pastor's wala to him. Since I couldn't punish this man, I will use it to punish this other man. I Which took a lady man? in. This lady that I took in yesterday, the, the so-called man that said he married her, bit her blue and black. It was the neighbor that even rescued her that called the police. Mm. So it, I just thought that it's not what you will put up with. He said, I'm afraid because I don't have paper. I said, look, that, that should not be a problem. That's the easiest way to get paper. When you don't have paper, yeah. you're being the man, the man always threatened her that said, you don't have paper. I'm the one that's going to call police for you. But luckily, no. it was a, a neighbor that called police for, for them two yeah. days ago. So she's you're in my here. house now. 
Yeah, she's in my house now. I took her in. I just said, stay here until you get yourself out. No, she should have come to the shelter. Police. Why didn't the police take her to the shelter? Shelter is better. Because they'll find yeah, that's what I. That is what I told her. Yeah, she's very scared. She doesn't even want to go out. Like oh, she said, should, just... She, okay, I, maybe I'll talk to you about this. Yeah, later. since yeah. They've, uh, they've given you a, a a reference number on the case that they called police, they said they gave us some other numbers to call to. I said, just follow up the numbers. They yeah. will give you a place and you'll sort yourself out. Yeah, no, she should go to shelter. Yeah. yeah, she should go to shelter. Shelter is the best place because okay. it will help you with your papers. What people don't uh -huh. understand if you are hiding because you don't have paper anywhere in the diaspora. Ah. Thank you very much, Mary. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, my lovely people. Thank you. God bless yeah. you, Auntie B. I You're love welcome, you. My darling, I love you. I'll talk to you later about that woman, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye -bye. So, what people don't understand about living with abusive people who say, I'll call police because you don't have paper and you are scared of being deported. If you are being abused and you have evidence to substantiate it, that is the easiest way to get paper. Okay? The police will take you to shelter. They will process, especially if you have children, they will process your paper for you. They will. Stop being afraid. Refuge is where you should go to. Call. Don't be afraid. Don't endure abuse because you don't have paper. Please. Some women would rather die than, than, than get help or speak out because they don't have paper. Because you don't want to be deported to Africa. They are not going to deport you. This is not Africa. Anywhere you live in the diaspora, please, the police will not deport somebody that is being abused. It's grounds for them to give you paper. There is every country that I know of in the diaspora, they look at it and say, okay, this is somebody fleeing domestic violence. And they will not return you to your country. So don't stay because uh, you are lied to that police will deport you. Police do not work like that, okay? They protect people who have been abused. So we want to thank Sister Mary. Thank you so much, Mary, for sharing your story. You are a very, very strong woman, and I know that your healing will be permanent. What that caller said is true about counseling. I'm going to discuss that with you. I don't know if you've had any, but you need it, okay? Because even the strongest of us, being through seven years of hell, you need to deal with that. You have to. So I'm also using this opportunity if you are a professional therapist. I need people that can work with us. We need we need a lot of collaboration on this platform. Thank you so much, everyone. All the social workers and you know doctors that have been working with me. I really appreciate you. I need professional trained psychotherapists, physio uh, psychotherapists, people who have got the training. So if you are a therapist and you professional therapist, please reach out to me. You don't need to be in the UK, wherever you are in the world, you can offer help. A lot of our ladies need therapy. And unfortunately, some of them cannot afford it. So if you want to do God's work with us, as we are doing on this platform, and you want to devote some of your time to offering free counseling section to these women online via Zoom or via WhatsApp or whatever, electronically, please reach out to me. You know my contact. Let me put that here before I leave. Uh, my contact details is on the screen. Please reach out to us on WhatsApp. I prefer WhatsApp. If you reach out, if you can send an email or reach out to me on WhatsApp, and then we'll link you to these ladies like Mary, who you can please help with counseling. They need to deal with the trauma. We don't need to, over, to sweep trauma under the carpet and allow people to just move on. Seven years of abuse is no joke. A lot of us need counseling. A lot of these ladies need counseling. And I'm looking for partners, people to partner with who can help in this area. Thank you to everyone that is supporting the work. Those who are supporting financially, emotionally, all the support groups that we have across the world, in the diaspora especially. Thank you so much. Okay? If you want to support us, PayPal, Cash App, the information is right there on the screen. Reach out so that we are planning to do so much more. By the grace of God, we are going to Germany. Uh, Germany is 10th to 13th of September. Okay? We are going to Germany to go and see Nana. I don't know how many of you remember Nana. Nana's story was one of the most difficult ones we've ever shared on this platform. She needs, she needs emotional support. She needs a lot of prayers. So we are going to see her, to pray with her and just encourage her. So we are going to Scotland, by the grace of God as well. We're going to Scotland, I think it's on the 20, 23rd, 23rd of September or so. I can't remember the date, but 
we're definitely going to Germany on 10th, 10th to 13th. If you are in Berlin, um, is it Berlin they call it? Munich, Munich area. I don't know if it's the same thing as Berlin. I don't think so. Berlin area. If you live, if you live around Berlin, they say you call it a, a Bayem or something. I don't know. They have two names for it, English and a German name. <laughs> yeah, you guys remember Nana? Yeah, we're going to see Nana. So we got to visit booked already for September. We got Germany and we got um, Scotland to see Nana. We are going to see Aduke. Is Aduke we are going to see in Germany? So support us, okay? Please don't keep quiet and just come here to learn without supporting. We need your encouragement. One person cannot do it. I don't have the strength to do it by myself. I need your support. Please let's join hands together to help these women so that everybody will be in a better place. They will be healed and hearty. And um, they will be in a better place to live a happier lives. Okay, thank you so much. Munich, yeah, is Munich area. That's the place. That's that Munich. That's where we are going to. That's where we are going to. By Yem, Munich. That's where we are going to. By the grace of God, that's where Aduke is. That's where we are going. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. Uh, tomorrow is public holiday in the UK. So we have uh, the last, what we call bank holiday. This is what they always call the uh, public holiday. We have the last one tomorrow. So I have a show. I scheduled a show tomorrow. I don't normally do shows on Mondays, but I have a story that I need to share. And I've been putting it off, but I can't put it off any longer. So it's now or never. So tomorrow I'll be here by 7 p.m. Join me. Uh, join me so that um, we can... Yeah, you can help me. I need help. If you live in California area, Arizona area, this story I've been putting forward. Uh, but we finally, it's time to share it now. This is the hour of salvation. And this is when we need to get help for this sister. It's a really, really pathetic and very, very sad story. Uh, if we have anybody from NBC in the building, yeah, I need you on this one. I need your help. It's your sister that this story is about. It's about your sister. I'm trying to get help for her, and it's urgent. It's very, very urgent. So uh, I want you to come in the studio. Come in tomorrow, please join me at 7 p.m., and I will be sharing that story. Thank you so much, everyone, for tonight. We pray that Mary's healing will be permanent. We are going to try and support her by getting her counseling so she can receive some counseling to deal with the trauma of this man that manipulated her, told her her mother is a witch, shouldn't send money to her children, abused her in all ways. We are not saying that there are not good men out there. There are good men, but there are some abusers who take advantage of empaths and they just use them and tear them apart. May God help us. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight and I will see you tomorrow on the live show. Give, please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. I love you guys. Abuse, trauma will not be your portion. Your life will be long and happy. We will have cause to celebrate one another in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Let's say no to abuse. Let's say no to, you know, shush, shush, shushing people up. It's the Sorosuke generation and we'll continue to speak. The battle is not against any gender. It's against abuse. It's against people who abuse others. And we'll say no to abuse. May God help us. Thank you so much, everyone. I love you guys very much from the bottom of my heart. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.